All right, thank you, Leslie, as Mitch Berger gets ready to kick off in the rain and back to receive the rookie, Roel Preston and Bill Schrader. Preston ran a kickback for a touchdown in a preseason game, and then against Detroit on opening day, he ran a kickback 100 yards for a regular season touchdown. And here we go from Lambeau Field with Preston hauling it in at the three behind a wedge and taken down up at the 25-yard line. Nice tackle made there by Pete Bursich. Brett Favre in quest of a fourth consecutive MVP award. Off to a brilliant start this year on a pace to throw 40 touchdowns with 10 through four games. In the backfield with him, you've got Raymond Harris and William Henderson, Freeman and Brooks outside, and Chamora is the tight end. Then up front, Verba, Rivera, Winters, Timmerman, and Dotson, the offensive line. And on the kickoff, Jeff Thomason, one of the Green Bay special teams players, and a backup tight end needs some attention. And the Packers can ill afford the loss of somebody like a Thomason if there's been one small chink in the Green Bay armor this season. It's been on special teams. It gives us a moment to take a look at the defense now for the Minnesota Vikings. Colin A starts with Ball Williams, and as Dan mentioned during the pregame show, Randall moving from tackle to end and back and forth. Edwards, McDaniel, and Rudd are the linebackers, and the suspect secondary, Fuller, Hitchcock came over from New England, then Griffith and Thomas, and it's a secondary that's been burned a lot, but they've also intercepted a lot of passes this year. Yeah, it leads you to believe that they're, that they're willing to gamble and go for the pick, but uh, I don't think that anybody on the Minnesota side of the field is happy with the way their deep coverage has been so far this year, Boomer. Well, especially, they, you know, they had two home games which were blowouts, so they had a lot of balls thrown against them, so sometimes that skews the statistics, but the thing that Denny Green said at the top of the show was that 11 turnovers are forced by his defense. They're plus seven. That's why they're 4-0. Oh. And uh, seven of those, uh, actually eight of those, have been interceptions. So he feels very confident about the big playability of his secondary. This will be an interesting test tonight because of the weather right now. Well, Thomason still getting the attention after the opening kickoff, and we'll be back in a moment. In a world where every second counts, a quick call can make a big difference. Cordell, I think the safety will bite on the play action. Try. All right. Thanks, Bob. That's why now all calls under 30 seconds are free. Introducing Sprint Sense anytime, where all calls are a dime a minute and calls under 30 seconds are on our dime. Call 1 800 PIN DROP. Because when you get Sprint Sense anytime, all of your calls are just one unrestricted dime a minute. They want to know when you're going to join the team. Make me an offer. <laughs> anytime to anywhere. Yeah, you coming to dinner Sunday? I've got a game on Sunday, Pop. That wasn't a question, son. I'll see you later. Call now to sign up for Sprint Sense anytime. Every call is just a dime a minute, and calls under 30 seconds are free. Call 1 800 PIN DROP for Sprint Sense anytime. Thanks, Pop. Introducing the all-new 1999 Grand Am. Its solid form design provides a stronger body structure so you can get down to some exciting business with hardly a squeak. Solid. Excitement, well-built. The all-new Grand Am by Pontiac. All right, we can take a look right here. As you see Jeff Thomason on the wedge, and Kibusama Mays are going to hit heads what's... Uh, Colin taking the wedge on head first. And right there, Jeff Thomason looks like he loses a little bit of uh, consciousness, I would imagine. Well, the good news is, Boomer, he walked off. He had his arm over the training staff, but he looked to be semi in control. So first down, Travis Jervy is in the backfield, and the pass is caught by Antonio Freeman. So with Dorsey Levin's gone, and he'll be gone probably until late November or early December, and Raymond Harris having done most of the work out of the backfield. Jervy is now healthy, had a bad hamstring last week, and we figure to see quite a bit of Travis tonight. 
Jervy didn't even play, and, and he brings a, a speed and an explosiveness to the Packer running game that Raymond Harris can't. Harris brings the experience, the power, but the pizzazz belongs to Jervy. Well, here it is on second and three. Raymond Harris, a little bit of pizzazz there after the 43-yard <laughs> line. And when your line blocks like yeah, that, you yeah. can look pizzazzy, can't you? That's, that's what that was. And I would imagine that Raymond Harris is tired of hearing about Dorsey Levins and how they can't run the football. He certainly wants to make a statement tonight. Everybody in the NFL is watching to see a great lead block, you know, that time by William Henderson. And that's the type of things that, you know, the Packers got to get back to if they want to run the ball successfully. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Favre. Stepping off to his right and hitting Harris up to the 50-yard line. Remember, Raymond Harris last year over 1,000 yards with the Bears before his season ended with a broken leg. And then it's ironic, Edgar Bennett was here, but with Levins as the ace guy, Bennett decides to sign with Chicago. That makes room for Harris to go someplace else, and Raymond winds up here. He's been in the league five years, Al. Remember when he first got started with the Bears, the phrase, ultra back because Raymond Harris could do just about anything and Dave Wonstead started calling him that. But he couldn't stay healthy. No. Second down and two. You can hear Brett Favre up here audibly for a pass play. So they go to a split back formation and the catch is made by Robert Brooks who had back surgery this summer and because of that Brooks doesn't practice. He does not practice during the week that out is just that their timing is, is still there even though he's not practicing and Brett has done a, a great job of just throwing the ball and keeping it low down here this is where the receivers like it from the 38 yard line on the opening drive of the game Harris and he gets stacked up just as he crosses the line of scrimmage hit first by Dixon Edwards the linebacker you know Dan we saw that Green Bay ran the ball right up the middle and John Randall's at right end. And you and I have gone back and forth about this. Why is John Randall at right end as opposed to inside as a tackle? And as a player, when I was playing against John Randall and the Minnesota Vikings, I wanted him far away from me. Well, Foz Fazio, the defensive coordinator, is giving this a whirl, putting him out at end. I, I'm with you. I think he's much more easily accounted for out at defensive end. You can ship him with a back. You can run away from him. I, I, I don't understand it, but he's the coach and we're not. Second down and nine, and this is Travis Jervey, who's the fastest guy on the team, to the 27-yard line. A flag is down. A penalty marker is down back at the 37. Our first flag of the game, and the referee tonight is Jerry Austin. Holding number 52 of the offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Center Frank Winters. And when you stick John Randall out at the end, that time they ran right at him, which is something that Mike Holmgren said that he wants to do. He doesn't want to give him a chance to pursue because he's so quick. But when he's in the middle, it usually takes two guys to block him. When you take guys with extraordinary quickness like Randall, and that time he's pinned to the inside by Verba, and a classic look at the hold right there in the middle of your screen and takedown by Frank Winters. Lawrence Taylor, Randy White, Alan Page, the guys who've had extraordinary quickness and pursuit in this league, your best chance of success was to go right at them. Pursuit is what they did better than anything else. So second and 20, negating an 11-yard gain. Favre gets sacked, taken down by Derek Alexander, their number one draft choice in 96 out of Florida State. Got him around the ankles and sets up a third and a mile. Boy, and that's just a good old-fashioned grinding sack. Alexander's on the inside. He just keeps driving and driving and driving against Marco Rivera. And then at the last minute, it's all field. Watch him drive. There at the top of your screen. Now watch the spin right there. He sensed that Favre was to his inside. He did a spin back in there, and Brett Favre had no shot. Third down and 26. That's Freeman in motion. They have to convert to the 28-yard line for a first down, and only to the 43 goes Derek Mays, so fourth and 15, and in comes the punting group. Game's opening drive. It rained a good part of the day, and slow in getting up for the Vikings is the linebacker Dwayne Rudd. Dennis Green and his team 
quartered in Appleton nearby today. It rained most of the day. The field, though, was covered until about two and a half hours before the game, and they expect a steady rain throughout the game. Well, after watching that game last night on ESPN, <laughs> we know that rain comes in many shapes and sizes. Now, I was talking to Sean Landetta this morning about the rain and the wind, and he said when you have to make a long kick, you try to drive it and make sure you kick it away from the guy that's receiving it. And if it lands on the ground and gets wet and slippery, that's exactly what he wants to get done. But in this situation, I think a pooch kick is probably what's in order here. Landetta has funded for 14 years in this league, three in the USFL. I asked him today, what are you going to do when you have to get a real job? He said, God forbid. <laughs> Landetta drops that one into the end zone. And that, was, and that was not doing his job very well. <clears throat> he overswung. Yes, he did. Just like you do with your drive. Yeah, but when I overswing, they don't go straight. <laughs> that puff was a dog. Out it comes to the 20. In his second season with Minnesota, took over when Brad Johnson was hurt. The end of the second week has guided them to two complete game victories and with him in the backfield Robert Smith over a thousand yards last year Charles Evans the blocker Reed and Carter outside we'll see a lot of Moss as well Glover the tight end Susie McDaniel Christie Dixon and Stringer very good interior five from the 20 yard line Cunningham to put it up on first down and the pass is underthrown Chris Carter's way and there's a flag down in the secondary 19 yards downfield they throw a flag Reed and Tyrone Williams were involved in that area. And it goes against Green Bay. Huh. I would say that Chris Carter got away with one there. You see, he actually gets out here and pulls Newsom by him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that actually wasn't the penalty that right. was called. Right. <laughs> the penalty that was called was on the far side of the field. White, Dotson, Brown, and Holiday, the defensive line for Green Bay. Koontz, Bernardo Harris, and Brian Williams with Newsom, Williams, Butler, and Sharper in the secondary. Their defense this year has been terrific. And in first and five, it is first and ten. Robert Smith gets stopped at the line of scrimmage by Brian Williams. Robert Smith, everybody knew this guy had a lot of talent. He was a number one pick a few years ago. The thing about Smith, though, is the durability factor. And then last year, he was able to stay healthy much of the season. He's probably the fastest guy on the team. 93, it was a knee. 94, he played 14 games. In 95, it was in an ankle. 96, it was a knee again. But Al, over five yards a carry when this guy's healthy. Second down and 10. I said, probably the fastest guy. The only other guy would be Randy Moss. Second down and 10, and Cunningham launches one. And there is Randy Moss. There's a flag down for the moment. It's a touchdown. But there's a penalty marker down to the 19-yard line. And this is coming back. I'll tell you, Mike Pryor, number 39, the safety for the Green Bay Packers, misplayed that ball. I'll tell you, they caught him, obviously caught a big break right here. But you could just see... The power that Randall Cunningham still has in his arm. And Jerry Austin's microphone didn't work right there. And one of those linemen is really happy. <laughs> let's, see if, let's see if we can see it. Right oh, here on the end. Well, it looks like Todd Stussy, the left tackle, made a tackle. And you Look could, at that acceleration boom. But you could see Pryor actually yep. was had a beat on the ball and just misplayed it. Woo. <laughs> well, <laughs> He's saying thank you. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I am a lucky guy. That's exactly <laughs> right. And Fritz Shermer just watching Minnesota's 75-yard would-be touchdown pass go a-wasting. And it is second down and 20 from the 15-yard line. Good protection, and Cunningham's going to go deep again. Double coverage this time and knocked away at the last instant. Robert Tate was the intended receiver, and Leroy Butler was there along with Pat Carroll. This is like punt, pass, and kick right here. What is going on? Randall does have a habit of throwing the ball down the middle, I will tell you that, and he gets away with it because of the athleticism of his receivers. This ball had no business going down the middle of the field like this. Well, one thing I think this still shows that Leroy Butler, nine years in the league at strong safety, still has his legs. He is right there, maybe a half second early, but Leroy can still motor. You better hold on if you're a secondary player because that ball's coming, boys. Third down and 20 from the 15-yard line.
And Randall's going to launch another one, and it is Moss who can't make the catch. Single covered by Darren Sharper. And there's another flag down up at the 38-yard line. This was a third and 20, and it's going to go against the Packers. And that'll be... That's Illegal contact, number 37 of the defense, five yards, automatic first down. Five yards, but it may as well have been 20 yards because it's an automatic first down after a third and 20. Tyrone Williams, number 37, he's working against Chris Carter. And the contact after the five yards. And actually, you know, Chris Carter is a type of receiver, Boomer. He'll initiate the contact every time. Uh, he will not back down. And, and really, as a quarterback, you love to see that because you know that he is going to give you space. What it looked like, though, I think the official, it looked like Williams was going to fall down, and he kind of pulled himself upright again by grabbing onto Carter. Second fall, second touch fall already on Williams six minutes into the game. From the 20-yard line, back to the ground with Robert Smith. He takes it up to the 25-yard line. He's stopped there by the middle linebacker, Bernardo Harris. You know, both of these quarterbacks, guys, you, as a secondary player, you have to be so alert, and you cannot take your eye off of the guy that you're covering, thinking that they're going to get sacked in the backfield. They both possess the arm to throw it up down the field, and there are receivers on both sides of the football that will come down with it. Second and six. We took a look at the Reverend Reggie White. Remember, Reggie was thinking about retiring in the offseason. Had even called a press conference. Smith to the outside. And gets tackled about two yards shy of the first down. Butler Roy Butler makes the stop. But Reggie not only has not retired, he's playing brilliantly. He was serious about it until God interceded. In fact, Santana Dotson was on his way for the retirement ceremony. And I think a lot of people in the Packer organization were looking forward to Reggie retiring. Not because they wanted to get rid of him, but they knew that it was a struggle for him even to play at an average level. What a rejuvenation for this future Hall of Famer. Now, this is the formation that the Packers are going to have a tough time defending. No backs in the backfield, four wide receivers. And they give it to David Palmer on an end around. And the versatile one picks up a first down to the 34. So you, with, with, with Minnesota, you've got Smith, you've got the great wideouts, and then you've got a kid like Palmer who comes in and does things like that. Give a lot of credit to Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator for the Vikings. I mean, he's been there quite some time. Now, he takes chances. You know, these guys are not going to try to protect their quarterbacks like we've seen in the last couple of weeks. They're going to let the offense flow. And Denny Green says that, you know, basically the way they're going to win is that if they get into a shootout, they can win this game. Wouldn't you love to be a coordinator, though, on a team with that much talent? Wouldn't you love to be a, a player and have that kind of coaching? <laughs> First down from the 34-yard line. No score. Seven minutes to go in the period. Pressure on Cunningham, who throws, and it's caught by Moss, and he's pushed out by Newsom. That's a gain of seven. And let's check in with Leslie. Al, it's not Kansas City North, but it is pretty rugged out here. As you know, it's been raining all day. Minnesota, which, of course, plays in the Dome, they switch from half-inch cleats to three-quarters of an inch cleats. The Packers said they didn't have to change anything. Lambeau Field, which is 41 years old this year, has a gravel drainage system, and they say it's terrific, Al. All right. In a game like this, you wonder if you're even aware of the elements. Not very much. And it, it, it's not enough of a rain I think to really alter the performance here too much second down and three from the 40 yard line it's just not that horizontal rain no so the screen is set up for Robert Smith first down into Green Bay territory and he takes it to the 45 yard line tackled there by Coons and Butler 14 yard gain Robert Smith coming into the game to show you the difference between the running games of these teams, Green Bay as a team averaging 2.6 yards a rush, Smith averaging 5.1, four tenths more than the yield on the 30-year treasury. There is the foot of Brad Johnson, normally the starting quarterback. He has a fractured right fibula. He's hoping to be back later this month. First and 10 from the 45. 
And here is Smith picking up three and Dennis Green and making sure that we knew last night that the, there is no quarterback controversy yeah. in Minnesota. Yeah, well. No matter when Brad is ready to come back. And, you know, when you're paying Brad Johnson that much money, yeah. he is the quarterback. I, I don't I don't really buy that. I mean, I, I love to hear that as a coach that, you know, you don't lose your job because of injury. But if your team is moving the ball and Randall Cunningham's playing well, we talked about Randall understanding his role, but I, you know, the way they're moving the ball and the way he's throwing the football, if they keep winning, I, it would be really hard to change. You really think so? I think it would be. I... Second down and seven. Cunningham throws, and that's off the fingertips of Jake Reed, who's been a, a little bit of the forgotten man this year with Moss coming in. And Carter being Carter, uh, Reed's only caught nine balls this year. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Sprint. For all the ways you communicate, Sprint keeps you connected to your world. Pontiac, driving excitement, and your local Pontiac dealers. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Dr. Pepper, and your local Dr. Pepper bottler, Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Boomer, I just don't think you can lose sight of the fact that Randall's 35 years hey, old. Yeah, but you're trying to win now. And you I want know. To, if your team's going, I don't think you want to mess that up. What he gives you, though, is the luxury of letting Brad Johnson get completely healthy before he comes oh, back. Absolutely. Third and seven, and Leroy Hoard is the tailback. They take it to him, and then the pass is caught by Carter, who is dragged down by Tyrone Williams. Chris Carter, someday he will be in camp. Hey, Chris, you know, Mike, uh, excuse me, Dan, I, I watching Randall throw the football, I, it doesn't matter how old you are. What matters is, are you moving the football team? Is the football team winning with you? And obviously, so far we've seen, I mean, he's thrown balls. He's thrown three deep balls. He's thrown corner patterns right here. The ball's right on the money. It's tight coverage. You can see, I mean, he's moving this football team. How do you replace that guy if he continues to play this way? Good question. I'm sure Denny Green will be thrilled to hear about your comments. <laughs> There's no quarterback controversy, but you're trying like heck to start one. Here's Smith swinging to the outside, and it's a three-yard pickup. He's run out of bounds by Williams. It, it, let's just close it by saying this. We have seen teams already this oh. year that don't have one good quarterback. What a luxury Dennis Green has here in Minnesota. Oh, absolutely. I, I just, I don't think you ever want to you know, paint yourself and put yourself in a corner and say, this is the way it's going to be. The things change in the NFL, week to week, situation to situation. And he, he and he even said it, he does have the luxury of having both of these guys. Second down and seven, good looking drive for the Vikings, their second drive of the night. 4.05 left in the scoreless first period. And that is knocked away at the last moment. Double coverage provided Greg DeLong, one of their tight ends, and Leroy Butler again knocking it away. When you're a quarterback, Dan, and you drop back in the, in the, in the pocket, you have to find out where Le Leroy Butler is. He is going to watch you. He's going to watch your eyes, and he's going to try to break in the ball. That time he took a chance because he let the post go over top of him. And he saw Randall's eyes, and he knew that he was looking right for Number 85 and uh, DeLong, and he jumped on us. So you have to be really careful and find out where he is. Third and seven. And a pump fake, and then the ball is given to David Palmer, and David Palmer can only take it to the 15-yard line, where he's a little short of the first down but short enough they'll have to send in the field goal unit but we've seen the minnesota offense and we've seen screens we've seen sweeps we've seen bombs we've seen little short passes i mean they have a full repertoire of all of those things and that's what i'm talking about not protecting his quarterback he's letting his quarterback play in the game to make decisions and make plays gary anderson 250th game hasn't missed a placement or a field goal this year gary with more field goals than anybody in the history of the national football league and this is a 33-yard attempt, and he is still perfect. Gary has spent much of his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they cash in for three, and Minnesota takes the lead late in the first. On this Monday night, one of these teams will be 5-0 and at the end of the game, and in first place, all alone, atop the NFC Central. The kick is taken at the five-yard line by Roel Preston. A pass to 20. And then he's run out of bounds up at the 32-yard line by Torian Gray. Three 
3.02 left in the opening quarter. Minnesota 3, Green Bay nothing. On Saturday on ABC, Notre Dame against Arizona State, Penn State against Minnesota, Nebraska also featured against Texas A&M, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina State. Check your local listings for regional action. Play resumes here. This is William Henderson, the fullback, who makes the catch and takes it up to the 43-yard line and very close to a first down. Nothing, guys, like coming to Lambeau Field on a Monday night. We'll have the Packers three times this year, but this will be our only visit here. But uh, it's special. It's still it very special. I, and, Boomer, I know you felt the same way as a player. Just never, ever will I forget the first time I walked through the tunnel onto that field. We have wind up here and we have everything, but this is really a great <laughs> place to play football. I, I, uh, I've had some very great, you know, good memories here that ended up, uh, you know, in bad situations, but... It really is a wonderful place to come and see a football game. All NFL fans should take a spot to come here. It, it just, it reminds pit players of my era, though. We have to think back to, the Packers were really bad for a long time. Sure. You know, they were so good and so dominant in the 60s, and then until this recent spate under under Mike Holmgren, there was a long dry spell in between. Well, you win Super Bowl one, Super Bowl two, and then you don't win another one until 31. <laughs> and a lot of things have changed since your era. Now, don't start with that, you players of my era. Now, don't start with that now. <laughs> first down from the 43-yard line, first and 10. A minute 45 remaining in the opening quarter. Travis Jervy in the backfield, and that's incomplete intended for Antonio Freeman. Brett Favre, the thing about Favre is not only what he does on the field, but he would seem to have the kind of demeanor boomer that this is a guy who will never become a fat cat, who will always love to play. He may win five or six MVP awards. You know, he's great. I'll tell you, he, he has such a personality about him. It's infectious. The way he practices, he's, he's at the facility before everybody else at 730 in the morning. He's tackling dummies in practice as well. Well, he's playing in a rivalry, as you just saw, that is unbelievably close on second down. And the pass is caught in Minnesota territory by Antonio Freeman, who gets taken down by Robert Griffith at the 40-yard line. You know, to go back to Brett Favre for a second, Al, he has all the intangibles that any quarterback would love to have. He has a fire and inspiration about him. He exudes leadership in the huddle. He has such a nice touch when he throws the ball. If I had to compare him, he is a more of a vertical passer than he is like a shallow cross passer he wants to throw the ball downfield he wants to take chances and his coach loves him to do that final minute of the quarter first down at the 40 yard line he's audibling again now at the line of scrimmage and he's under pressure John Randall <laughs> and throwing and it's incomplete intended for Antonio Freeman through the hands of Torian Gray after Farm was chased by John Randall. Randall's picture is next to the word chaos in the dictionary, <laughs> and that is a very good illustration of what he can do to your offensive plans. It looks like he has his Halloween Batman mask on right there. And he's got, watch this, he's out there at end again, going to start on Verba, and then he goes flying into Rivera, and he ends up whipping both of them in a matter of about a half a second. But you know that that was a three-step drop that Brett didn't throw, so the offensive lineman let him go. Second down and 10 at the 40-yard line. And they give it to Jervy, and he has some room through the middle, and he picks up about nine, maybe even a first down. He appears to be a little short. You know, there was a graphic we just want to bring back for one second, which we brought up. It's worth looking at. This is a rivalry that started a number of years ago, and it, a rivalry could not be as close as this one. Not only are these teams even in facing each other, there it is, with each team 500 at home, 500 on the road, but look at the yardage through the years, how close that is. Yeah, it's hard to imagine you could do that. Unbelievable, 24 yards separating these teams, going all the way back to the beginning of this rivalry in 60. Far throws is contact in the secondary. Crown wants a flag. Don't get it. Now, wait a minute, Boomer. You and I are backing up here at play. Yeah, okay. What's when the problem? When John Randall got the pressure, 
on Brett Favre. Are yep. you saying that it was a three-step drop? The so lineman let him go. No, he audible to a three-step yeah. drop. Yeah, yeah. The lineman know that that the ball's going to get bit, bit, you know, quickly. yeah, going to get yeah. out of there quickly. Yeah. So it's all timing in their head. They're thinking that the ball's gone. So they think they only have to pass protect for a second and a half. That's what they'll tell their coach in the meeting oh, tomorrow. Oh, boomer, boomer. You never hey, sat in on an offensive line. Oh meeting. yeah, I'm sure. Oh no. Yeah, you guys hey. always blame it on. Oh, Try to get back to reality as quickly as possible. Second down and ten. Final play of the quarter coming up at the screen. It's Kirby, and he takes it to the 22-yard line, a little short of the first down. So Green Bay marching as the quarter ends. At the end of one, Minnesota three, Green Bay nothing. And Monday Night Football resumes from Lambeau Field after this message and a word from our ABC station. Rainy night in northeastern Wisconsin in Green Bay where it's rained all day. Right now, a light rain and a good first quarter. We start the second quarter. Al Michaels with Dan Deardorff, Boomer Esiason, and Leslie Visser. Dennis Green, the recipient of a contract extension. We mentioned at the top, Red McCombs, the new owner of the team. And it looked like he was not going to necessarily extend it early on. And then before the start of the regular season, they made a deal for 2001. Third down and two now for Green Bay. Oh. Marching and almost intercepted. Intended for Freeman. Nearly picked off by Jimmy Hitchcock. Whoa. <laughs> Hitchcock, a guy who was picked up from New England. Minnesota opted not to re-sign Dwayne Washington, who got a big deal from Pittsburgh, and they brought in Hitchcock to play that spot. Hitchcock had his eyes in the backfield, saw that Brett only took three steps. And this time, Brett just launched it without actually finding out where Hitchcock was. 40-yard field goal attempt. Ryan Longwell, the ball spotted at the 30-yard line. And Longwell, in the second year out of Cal, bangs it through. And so we are even. Just seven seconds into the second quarter at Lambeau Field. It's Minnesota 3, Green Bay 3. Reggie White. Again, anchoring the Green Bay defense. And he has had some terrific performances against Minnesota, averaging over a sack a game. Longwell kicking off. Good deep kick fielded in the end zone by David Palmer. And the Vikings will take over at the 20-yard line. Cunningham ready to lead Minnesota's offense again. 3-3. Lambeau Field, the Minnesota Vikings have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Game time, 3-3. Early second quarter, the battle of the unbeaten, the only two remaining unbeaten teams in the NFC. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Butler comes in on the blitz, and they pick him up. They double-team him, and the pass is caught by Carter. His second catch tonight, Craig Newsom stops him, and that's enough for a first down. I, I, I am really impressed with the way that Randall Cunningham is throwing this football, and he's throwing into the wind right now, and he puts it right on the money. Chris Carter does a real good job of getting separation. He's so, these guys are so dangerous, and Randall is throwing the ball with a real tight spiral, which is what you need to do into the wind. From the 33 to the ground, Robert Smith, a lot of traffic there. A hard two-yard gain up to the 35, second down, and eight. In the AFC, you've got a couple of unbeaten teams, one of which we'll see next week, the Jacksonville Jaguars 4-0 against the Miami Dolphins on Monday night. The other team, of course, the Denver Broncos with Bubby Brist. How about the fact Randall Cunningham actually leads the league in pass rating when you factor in yesterday's game, and Bubby Brister is second. They've got two great offensive coordinators that they're playing for, and they're showing their abilities within their system. Second down and nine. Cunningham throws. Caught at the 40-yard line, and that's Jake Reed who stretches for the first down. Tyrone Williams stops him, but they'll move the chain. Al, to elaborate on your point, Bill Walsh I think in many people's minds was in a league all of his own when it came to running an offense. Mike Shanahan is moving into that territory mm -hmm. with the way he is running Denver's offensive machine. And on the subject of Bill Walsh, two of his disciples on the sidelines tonight, yep. Mike Holmgren and Dennis Green, who coached together at San Francisco under Bill. Here's Smith and Leroy Butler, or as Mr. Butler likes to say, Leroy Butler, Leroy. comes up to make the stop. In this day and age, 
in order to be a successful offense, you have to have offensive coaches that are able to call plays, that understand situational defenses, and certainly you have to have a quarterback and, and play to his abilities. And I think that's what the Vikings do by using Randall's strong arm and throwing the ball down the field, and certainly that's what the, the Packers do with uh, Brett Favre. Second and 10. Early second quarter, the game tied 3-3. Randall hangs in, throws, and it is caught. Reed spinning around and avoiding the tackle and staying inbounds to score. He broke a Craig Newsom tackle, and Reed, who's been the forgotten man, a 56-yard reception. I was wondering going into this game exactly how Jake Reed was feeling. A lot of his passes have gone to number 84, Randy Moss, and he's, and he's a Pro Bowl type of receiver himself. It's good to see him get in the end zone. Anderson converts, 27th career touchdown reception for Jake Reed, 10-3, Vikes. We mentioned at the beginning, a forgotten man in a way because of the emergence of Moss and Carter doing his job, and there's Randy Moss and the, the tight ends in, in the action a lot, and Robert Smith catching screen passes, but uh, the big play tonight, Cunningham to Reed, it's 10 to 3. Berger kicks, fielded a yard in by Roel Preston. A pass to 20. And Roel with a big run back, trying to stay in bounds, and Roel Preston scores for the second time in a career that's only four and a half games old. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Well, I thought he was going to get nailed at the sidelines, but boy, did he get some blocks from his Ooh. teammates. A beautifully executed kickoff return for Johnny Holland's units that needed some help. They've been under fire from head coach Mike Holmgren. You talk about demoralizing. This crowd was quiet after that last touchdown pass, and now all of a sudden they're back into it again. Ooh, man. <laughs> and Longwell's kick is good. Roel Preston, for the second time this season, has run a kickoff back for a touchdown. He did it on opening day against Detroit and does it here to answer the Minnesota touchdown. 10-10. Six yards, 100 good. Before, first of all, there in the middle of the screen, advises Preston whether to come out with the ball and then watch him go all the way up the field, get the key block right there on the kicker, Mitch Berger, <laughs> come back, get another block, and a kickoff return for the Packers. That is huge. Receivers love blocking those kickers, oh. don't they? <laughs> well, that, Schrader was the return guy until Preston and Milburn got it. There is Palmer to the 24. Brett Favre's reaction, you'll see that coming up on the kickoff return. Roel Preston, I mentioned four and a half games into his Green Bay career. He started with Atlanta. He was a receiver there and then went to Washington very briefly. And there is Favre exultant on the sideline. And Preston is the guy who beat out Milburn, who subsequently winds up with the Chicago Bears. But there he is, Roel Preston. And that is already eight touchdowns on kickoff returns in the National Football League. And this is only the fifth weekend. And Al Milburn was the guy who beat out Schrader. But yet Schrader is still a big part of it. From the 24-yard line. That's caught by Andrew Glover. Last year, there were a total of 14 touchdowns on kickoff returns. This year, already eight in five weeks. Tomorrow night, Daryl Hughley is the new comedy smash on Tuesday. A hilarious new episode of the Uglies tomorrow night on ABC. Second down and four. George Kuntz out of the game. The linebacker for Green Bay with a hamstring pull. His return is questionable as Robert Smith picks up two. So we're going to see a lot of Lamont Holland twisted linebacker tonight, 56. There is Kuntz trying to walk it off. 
That first down play by the Minnesota Vikings illustrated exactly what Randall Cunningham has become. A pocket passer where he's finding his second and third receivers and just dropping the ball off and taking really what's given to him. When he was younger, he'd be running all over the place. Third down and two. And that's caught by Carter. Flag is thrown. And Chris Carter, that would be, or if it holds up, his third catch of the game. And it is against the Green Bay Packers. Number 36 of the defense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. The interesting thing about that last play, you're David Palmer. You're 5'8", 173 pounds. They bring you in motion across the, the line, and you have to block number 92, Reggie White. It was, it was like a little chihuahua biting at his ankle. <laughs> but Reggie is... Uh, Watch this. <laughs> I think the Reverend showed mercy there, Boomer. <laughs> what a great job by Palmer of sticking his face in there. I want some more money from Palmer if I got to do that. First down from the 48-yard line. Randall going deep again, adjusting his moss, oh. and then oh. Randy Moss squeezes his way in for the touchdown. It is unbelievable. He just throws it up, and these guys ca catch the football. I, this is like a circus out here with these guys. Randy Moss is the best young receiver that I have seen maybe ever. This guy from an impact from the moment he got here. Just look at the physical control, the concentration, and the timing when to go up and get that ball over Tyrone Williams. Boomer, uh, this is an ex nothing new, an extraordinary talent. Oh. This, this guy looks like Jerry Rice. Gary Anderson bangs Whoa. it through, and Moss in his career, which is a little bit more than four games old, has already scored five touchdowns. Well, let's not anoint him yet. To be no, done. I didn't say he was Jerry Rice. <laughs> but he's something. This is definitely a coaching decision to say, we're going to go down the field with it, guys. If we can get them singled up one-on-one, -on -one, we can throw the ball, underthrow it, and our athletic receivers are going to go up and get it. What a terrific form of strategy by Brian Billick and Dennis Green. And Tyrone Williams has to be a little shell shot. That was pretty good coverage. This is a short kick, and you've got the man who ran it back the last time, Preston, who ran it back 101, and this time he is dragged down up at the 35 by Torrey and Gray. He does have him covered, but he has to find the football, and that's the key. And when you start throwing underthrown goes like this, you know, these guys have to be able to adjust. And Randy Moss and the other receivers, Jake Reed and Chris Carr, they know where the ball is. Well, on Reed's play on the other side of the field, Newsom never saw the ball. Tyrone Williams at least saw this one coming and still couldn't do anything about it. And Randall look at that start. Whoa. 192 yards already. I think that's that peak rating, too, isn't 20 it? 20 minutes into the game. And that's Raymond Harris. Now, with, with Randy Moss, it's the first time he's been in a game with this much exposure. He is the kid who was involved in a violent assault in high school, winds up in jail, fails a drug test. They extend jail time. Then he winds up being charged with assault against the woman who is the mother of his two children. So he comes with all of this baggage, which is the reason why a guy who had his college career goes all the way down to the 21st pick. 19 teams passed on him, including Cincinnati twice. Here's Favre, and the catch is made up at the 45-yard line by Robert Brooks. And that is a first down as he takes it into Minnesota territory. His other baggage that was somewhat lighter was that he caught 53 touchdown passes in only two years at Marshall. Right. He could have gone to Notre Dame, but they had a pass on him because of his pass. He went to Florida State and redshirted, but they let him go, and he first wound up foul. at Huntington, Roof West Virginia at Marshall. Number 93 of the defense, 15 yards, first down. That's the, John Randall. The one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to aggravate Brett Favre or John Randall for that matter. But really, Brett Favre gets in the games when this starts happening to him. I mean, he's uh, been on the money so far tonight. But what? you know, Dan, they called John Randall for roughing the passer there, Boomer. Brett Favre, three-time MVP. Okay, so anyway, the fact <laughs> of the matter is, is you do not want to get him into the game physically like this because that's when he starts flinging the ball all over the place. And you're right, we're going to see a shootout. This is, 
This is unbelievable. Do all quarterbacks have glasses as Rhodes colors huh. here? That guy, I, you know, I always was nervous playing against him. From the 34, Favre throwing into a lot of traffic and That's picked, picked off. off. Intercepted by Orlando Thomas, and Thomas takes it all the way back to the 35. So Favre throws it into a quadrangle intended for Mark Chamura, and it's Thomas who winds up with the pick. This was just trying to hit Chamora on a seam pattern, and he actually threw it behind him, and he threw it with a lot of pressure in his face. Jerry Ball. Ouch. And Jerry, Jerry is a big ball. <laughs> and I, yeah, that seriously affected the throw, don't you think? Absolutely. Homer, I mean, he's getting, he, he didn't get to step into it at all. Right, and he wants to throw it on the inside shoulder, not the outside shoulder, but... Pressure is what leads to interceptions, and that's exactly what Jerry Ball got there that time. Jeez, I'm surprised they didn't call roughing the quarterback. Here is Robert Smith, who picks up eight yards. Meanwhile, Orlando Thomas is a guy who quietly, in his three-plus years in the league, now has been responsible for 24 takeaways, the most by any player since the start of the 95 season. There it is. Orlando Thomas, and they talk about the Minnesota secondary being the Achilles heel, but here they are again with yet another interception. At the 44-yard line, this is Harder, and that play slow and developing, and he just does get back to the line of scrimmage tackled by Brian Williams. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Miller Lite, an official sponsor of the NFL. And Unisys, when it comes to information, technology, and services, we eat, sleep, and drink this stuff. <laughs> kind of like we are with football, right, Al? Well, that's a low-carb diet. Yes, it is. <laughs> High protein, baby. You can eat, drink, and sleep. This, this is a good game. This is, that's the makings of a real classic. Third down and two at the 43-yard line. And Cunningham's going to keep it. Whoa, and Randall loses ball. the football. Does Holiday have that? Well, he's number 90. And he does. Bonnie Holiday. Okay, Randall took quite a whack that time going up. He's a little slow getting up. Well, I wonder. I think Randall saw that there was a blitz. And I'm just wondering if he didn't decide to take this quarterback sneak on his own. Well, he's the leading rusher among quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. Some of his line looks like they're run blocking. The tackles look like they went into a pass set. That's why I'm wondering right. whether or not he yeah. just decided to do that on his own because he had no back in the backfield. All right, Boomer, I think you're right. That was a, They looked completely out of sync. Vaughn Booker creates the fumble. He laid the hit on. Holiday recovers. It's a wraparound draw to Travis Jervey who takes it to the 35-yard line. It'll be second down and one with 7.07 to go and a good first half bikes up by a touchdown. And most quarterbacks, after they throw an interception, they kind of have that in his back of his mind. But in this case, Brett Favre doesn't really matter. Doesn't, that doesn't matter to him. And he wants to come out and start making some plays. You can see right there a little nifty handoff to Travis Jervey who's 100 miles an hour straight ahead, too. <laughs> wrap around, a wrap around draw. I like that, Al. Mm -hmm. Chicanery. Yes, sir. <laughs> Trickery and deceit. <laughs> Second down and one. Back to Raymond Harris, who tries to pick up that yard and gets uh, bunched up. Very close to a first down. Randall Cunningham, if he's warming up, it's, it's conceivable that he was shaken up on that oh, fumble. He definitely got dinged. I don't ever remember seeing a quarterback get hit that hard well, on a quarterback sneak. At the very end of that play, he gets flipped over, and his left shoulder really went into the ground hard. Jake Fiedler is the backup quarterback, a kid out of Dartmouth. Third down and one from the 34. And this is Henderson, and he gets wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And a late flag. Among other things, we're told there's a thunderstorm nearby and is expected to pop in here in a few minutes. Wind picking up. Jerry Austin is our referee here this evening. There is no foul on the play. The formation was legal. 
The result of the play is fourth down. I'm not sure what will happen when this thunderstorm gets here and there's still a light rain falling, but kudos to this Lambeau Field grounds crew. They had this field covered off and it is holding up quite well, at least to this stage of the ball game. The field is, uh, is not coming up in chunks whatsoever. So it's fourth down and one, and the Packers will at least line up to go for it in the 35-yard uh, line. Oh, here we're going to play. Here we don't do this again. See, this were a 52-yard field goal. They're going to go for it, and they don't get it. Henderson. So after a nine-yard gain on first down, the Viking defense rises up. Coach Fazio <laughs> with the signal. And Tony Williams, number 94, the first guy to hit him. You got to give Williams and Jerry Ball a lot of credit in the middle like that. When they try to run the ball up the middle, your defensive tackles have to stay low. They have to be underneath the blockers, and they have to create push. And you can see Williams and Jerry Ball getting into the backfield, especially Williams and John Randall unblocked. Well, Williams ends up two and a half yards into Green Bay's backfield, slipping to the inside of left guard Marco Rivera. That just kills the play. So it's Cun over. Cunningham, despite the takedown on that last quarterback sneak back in the game, going to the air and a little overthrown, intended for the tight end Andrew Glover. Second and ten. Cunningham taking a shot from Bonnie Holiday, and Mike uh, Holmgren told us in preseason, he said, you know, I have to temper my enthusiasm about this guy. He's good. <laughs> and he is good. He had a great game last week against the Panthers, and you can see right now, they... I'm sure Fritz Schirmer said, look, we can't let Randall stand back there. We got to start hitting him. And I mean, when we hit him, we got to let him know that we're there. Second down and 10 up at the 35-yard line. Randy Moss slips wide to the left. Takes to Smith. Going deep. Looking for Randy again. Perfect throw. Great catch. Darren Sharper with good coverage, but what can you do? I know what you can do. You can start looking for the football a little bit. This is three times now. I would imagine that the first day they get out to practice next week, they're going to be working on this play. You, you just have to turn around. It's, it's one of the most difficult things to do for a defensive back is to run stride for stride, but you have to look for the football. Well, one thing about Sharper, he was committed to playing Randy Moss. It never even crossed his mind to look back. He never even twitched looking back. Whew. 269 yards already. 10 per whack for the Vikes. Against a defense ranked number one in the league coming into the weekend. Cunningham to the end zone, and that's knocked down and nearly intercepted. And Newsom, realizing he could have had the pick, <laughs> holding his helmet. Well, could have and, and should have. Well, you know, the thing is... <laughs> The secondary for the Packers better, you know, they gotta they gotta pick it up a little bit. They gotta be they gotta be more urgent about what they're doing out there. And Boomer, how many better chances are they going you, to get than that? You, I mean, you can't drop that football. I mean, these guys are talented back there, but I think they're a little shell shocked right now. Second and ten, wind picking up, starting to rain slantingly right now. T storm in the neighborhood. Ball of the 24. Green, Smith gets a block, picks up the first down, heading for the end zone, touchdown Minnesota. Jake Reed and Randall McDaniel through the key blocks on that one. This is just a magnificent performance by this Minnesota offensive machine. And you're right, the key block was by Randall McDaniel. Does his job at the line of scrimmage, gets downfield, looks back, picks off Sharper. When you could throw the oh. when you throw the ball down the field as much as they have tonight, and you start throwing screens off of that, you know the defenders are going to be so far back that big plays can come from that. Andrew Glover, the tight end, looked like he had another good block downfield for Minnesota. Everybody, everybody's getting a piece of the Green Bay Packers here for the Vikings. Flag down on the conversion. And Lambeau Field is strangely silent. Well, Al, you documented well, the 25 in a row. Number 87 of the kicking team. Replay the try. To say they're not used to this is well, obviously well, an understatement. Amazingly, the last loss here was to the St. Louis Rams on opening day in 1995. 
Rich Brooks was coaching the, the Rams back then. That's how long ago that was. Well, remember that the, you know, the Packers were in a hole last week and got back into it, you know, by the by by the start of the second half. So this is uh, obviously a veteran football team. There's no panic. I think they're a little, you know, starstruck if, right. you, if you ask me. Right. Robert Smith, by the way, saying hi, mom, pointing to his teeth because he had to have some work done on it. He scored last week on a screen against Chicago, and David Dixon, the guard, came down and. When he hugged him, he knocked his helmet into his teeth. Chipped two teeth, lost one, but the bridge work looks pretty good right now, and so do his hands. Well, David Dixon weighs 352 pounds. <laughs> That's where a hug can be a life-threatening experience. Yes. All right, coming up next week is Sunday Night Football on ESPN, and that's the matchup. Atlanta 3-1 and one under Dan Reeves against the New York Giants. And Monday night, a beauty for us, Dan Marino and the Dolphins with a mark of 3-1 and one against the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars from Jacksonville next Monday night. We're going to let Danny throw it next week a little bit. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think he might. All right. I think he might. By the way, was I hallucinating yesterday? Did I see the Falcons score 50-some points? Oh, hey, Dan Reeves has got them going on down there, I'll tell you. Chris That's, Chandler's playing well, wow. playing good defense. Tom Capers must have felt like he was hallucinating. Yes. Green Bay's defense. Now, th look at this coming into the game. In those five categories, key, key categories, number one in the league, and right now in a game that's 25 minutes and 17 seconds old, they have been shredded for 24 points and 294 yards. I think it's safe to say they're no longer number one in any of those categories. Ooh. I'll tell you, playing, playing the Minnesota Vikings is a track meet. Guys are running all over the place. They have speed at all the... At the key positions, they have a quarterback who can throw the football. Let me ask you again, Dan. Brad Johnson comes back and he's healthy. And Randall Cunningham's throwing the ball all over the place like this. What do you do? I think I think Brad Johnson, when he comes back, is going to be the starting quarterback. I don't know. That's what Dennis Green said. Brad Johnson is their is their backup quarterback, and that is what he will return to when Brad Johnson comes back. I understand your point. I don't know how you take out a guy that's that hot either. Here's Preston from the three-yard line. A flag is thrown, and he brings it back to the 18. That last Viking touchdown, remember, came after they had stopped Green Bay on second and one, third and one, and fourth and one. With a score 17 to 10, and then down the field they went 65 yards to make it 24 to 10. I think it's safe to say, though, guys, after we listen to old Jerry. We have a personal foul. We have a low block. 31 of the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. There's a lot of quarterbacks in this league right now that would like to be where Randall Cunningham oh, is. Without question. Running right? this show. Oh. And to think two years ago, Randall had no contract offers, went to work for TNT, was part of their pregame and halftime shows and got into the the granite business he was actually he was building kitchen counter tops in las vegas in las vegas when yep. you when you look at their offensive team you see the veterans on the offensive line a nice size tight end all the wide receivers the running back they have every piece that you would want as a quarterback from the 32 Favre throws that's caught by the tight end mark chamura a flag is thrown after mark picks up a momentary first down kaylee wong made the tackle Against the Vikings. So it's the first time Illegal contact. Coming. Number 37 of the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Dan, you know a lot about construction. You you can you can make a pretty good living though with granite kitchen countertops. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh yeah. yeah. Throwing a little fine Italian marble in there, and you can yes, pretty good markup in that business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Problem is you cut one of those babies wrong. You know you got to haul it away and start over. Yes, you do. From the 44. Barb throws and nobody home. And Brett goes down. Mr. Randall helps him back up. One of the great characters in the National Football League is John Randall. His motor, well, he doesn't have a motor. This guy's got a series of motors. He's got leg motors, arm motors. Good shot there. 
by Stalin Colony. But it was uh, John Randall who was nice enough to give Brett a hand up, and I'm sure he had something to say in the process. Oh, absolutely. Four wide out here, second and ten. A win with whipping, raining harder. Travis Derby on a draw. Escapes what would have been a McDaniel tackle. Picks up a couple. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie. Al, I, follow, I found a Hall of Famer, Bart Starr, of course, the legend who corresponds with Brett with Favre every year. And what do you have advice for him right now, Bert? Well, I don't need to give this guy advice. He is absolutely sensational, and I think they'll get this turned around. Vikings are playing very, very well. Well, there you have it, Al, the Star Report. Yes. <laughs> oh, very good, Les. Mm -hmm. I think you could go to every Bratwurst stand in this stadium and bump into a Hall of Famer. <laughs> they are plentiful. Third down and seven from the 47-yard line. Favre escapes. Oh. But not a second time, and this time he is wrapped up by Derek Alexander. And he got away from John Randall. Oh, oh baby. John can't believe that. Looks like John Randall ran right around Ross Verba. I, it, you know, maybe, maybe we're wrong, Dan. Maybe, maybe that's the spot where he should be. There he is at the bottom of your screen. Gets into Verba. And Actually, just, it's Matt Willig yes, in it's there. it's Matt Willig. Verba's out of the game. 76, Matt Willig. And now Landetta to kick. They have Palmer back, but they've got Moss back as the short man. So it behooves Landetta to really bang one, and he does. And Palmer fair catches it at the 11-yard nice, line. Nice punt there. So Randall and the defense rest. Ball up at the 11-yard line, 256. So reminder tomorrow, another episode of... I'll tell you, if Matt Willie's going to be the left tackle against John Randall, they're going to have to get him some help. Because that's going to be a long evening trying to block John Randall. Well, we're checking with the Packers right now to find out if something's wrong with Ross Verba. First and 10, Minnesota at the 11-yard line. And Robert Smith off the left side, gain of about three. Kenny Wolf, our producer, passes along the catch of the night. Chris Carter, and then he was... Let go by Buddy Ryan, and all he has done in a career that will wind up on the steps of Canton, Ohio someday, is catch 760 passes. If you're a DB for the Green Bay Packers now, I mean, you're, you're shell-shocked. You're playing off. That time, Tyrone Williams is playing off Chris Carter. One minute, they're playing on him, and now they're off of him. So, and, and Randall did a good job of throwing the ball underneath. Two-minute warning. Vikings with all three timeouts. And a 14-point cushion. This is the first NFL game in eight years with three touchdowns of 50 or more yards. Two by the Vikes, the other Preston's pick return. And at the two-minute warning, Minnesota, a first down as Robert Smith gets stopped at about the line of scrimmage. Half winding down. What about halftime? Let's check in with Chris Berman. All right, Al, thank you. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show, the ESPN Top 10 Plays of the Week, including the speedy scoring spree by those scary Falcons. Also, the College Play of the Year and a review of the first half. Now, back to Lambo and Al Michaels. And what a first half it has been here as John Randall and the Viking defense looks on their offense right now. Second down and nine up at the 22-yard line. Liquid blowing. Minnesota approaching 300 yards in total offense tonight. You know what I thought was interesting, Al? Was Prior the to the snap, ball starts. Number 82 of the offense. Five yards. It's still second down. That after Green Bay held Minnesota on that first down play, that they didn't call timeout. Against any other team, they're probably calling timeout there to get the ball back before the end of the half. Yeah, but the way Minnesota's going, yeah, that's the, the, you know. <laughs> what does that tell you? I was yeah. like, what does that tell you? Let's get exactly. off the field, let's regroup, yeah. and let's see if we can get this half over with. Well, it tells you that a team has 241 yards in a quarter, so what, what's that figure out that, that comes out to 964 <laughs> yards for the game? I would think, however, if they hold them here, they'll probably call timeout if the clock is still running. Starting to pour, second down and 14, and the wind is really picking up now. And Cunningham swings it, and that's caught by Reed, who breaks the tackle, and Jake gets a first down. He's up to the 36-yard line, tackled by Butler. Obviously, if there is severe weather moving into the Green Bay area, 
he who has the lead certainly has the advantage. And right now the Vikings up by two touchdowns. Why aren't the Vikings calling timeout right now? What are they thinking about? They have all three at their disposal. I, I don't know why they didn't use one well, right there. Maybe because of the weather. I'm, I'm just guessing. Oh, but the way know. they're going, well, I mean, they're, they're lined up as if to run the clock out. No, no, no this is a fake play here. He's going to snap it to the guy behind him. Yep. Randall's walking off, and they're going to snap it to the guy yeah, behind him. From the 35-yard line. <laughs> well, what was oh, yeah. that? A little, little chicanery going on there, Dan. But oh, what? But what a waste of time. It was. Well, they were trying to run oh. a, you know, a, a, a pool you play there, but I, I don't get it. I mean, they lost, what, about 35 seconds at least. I guess the only thing they can figure is that they, they're up by two touchdowns. They've had a marvelous half. It's pouring like crazy right now. Oh. And why, you know, throw it up and, and risk an interception? Well, I guess. Well, oh. they, why, why not? They've been throwing it up all night. But, you know, that play right there obviously was... You know, they were trying to run a you know a trick play there, and it didn't work. Have you ever heard of something called killer instinct? Yeah. You know, really. Oh, I can't take issue with the way. The only thing I can take issue with them now is is the fact that they wasted the time right here. Other than that, I mean, oh man. I guess they figured they could just throw it up and score in 10 seconds. I don't know. I, I, I guess they thought that if maybe Jeff Christie, the center, was under instructions that if the Packer defense started walking towards their sideline to go ahead and snap the ball. Take a look at the the quarterback comparison with Cunningham having an unbelievable half. And trying to pack on more yardage than he can as that goes through the hands of Chris Carter and incomplete. <laughs> well, let's face it. Brett Favre has had some big nights on Monday Night Football but not by himself. Randall Cunningham is no stranger to getting it done under these bright lights before. Randall Cunningham has, has turned it up when he's had to. Now what do they do now? 21 seconds? Second and 10. <laughs> well, it's a spread formation. So maybe give it one shot to, to get into field goal range. Instead, they keep it on the ground to give it to Smith. He takes it up to the 42-yard line. They're just going to let the clock run. They must be sad. I, I, yeah. I don't get it, but very strange. Playing at Lambeau Field, two touchdowns ahead of the Packers, that's not enough for me. Well, I've got to think, if you ask them about it after the game, it's dictated by the weather conditions. They're happy to go in up by two touchdowns. 24-10, a brilliant first half of the Minnesota Vikings. It's pouring in Green Bay. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show, ESPN's Top 10 Plays of the Week. And we will be back after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC station. Welcome back to Halftime, everybody. The score, an upset perhaps in the making. Minnesota leading at Lambeau Field to pack with a 29-game win streak, Vikings 24 and Green Bay 10. In the ESPN Top 10 Plays of the Week, we bring a wide range of activity, east and west, college and pro and the best impersonation of a running back by a 300 pound defensive tackle here we go first of all trickery will get you everywhere former packer edgar allen Cole bennett for the bears authors the halfback pass to chris penn bears come from way back to eat the lions 31 27. falcons wide receiver the rookie tim dwight throwing across the field to the quarterback chris chandler watch this you block him right there chandler makes the move 51 23 atlanta Great week of division playoffs in baseball. The best scene for Trevor Hoffman and the Padres as they celebrate their win. The most bizarre scene, Seattle at Kansas City. Sunday night football. On the outskirts of the city, six inches of rain in two hours. Nine turnovers in Sunday night football. And it wasn't his fault, but you knew two of them would happen by Ricky Waters. Maybe this wasn't the most bizarre. How about in New Orleans? Patriots feel they have this ball down on the one. Larry Wiggum does it, but the ball is still alive. Andre, Battle of Hastings, picks it up. And how bizarre, how bizarre. He could go OMC. Only Tom Tupelo Honey saves the touchdown. Patriots win by three. Score! Very nice. That was very 
The Falcons, three touchdowns in 48 seconds. Bob's sister, Christian, the first one. Chris Chandler to O.J. Santiago, the second one against Carolina. Following, William White on the fumble recovery. Wow. And how about college football? Last play of the game, Arizona Trail 28-24 at Washington. Ortiz Jenkins for the win. What? Touchdown. Take another look. The Wildcats 5-0. They win it 31-28. The big men coming. Reagan Upshaw of the Bucks helped ruin Danny Erie Cannell of the Giants. You know Drew Smith can move. He goes around Jamie Brown, makes the sack on Steve Young. It's a fumble. Number 75, Marcellus Wiley. You remember him from Columbia. Looks like a running back. And 18 touchdowns as a tailback with the Lions. And former Viking and Pro Bowl defensive tackle Henry Thomas. Look at this. Against the Saints. Whoop! And then... Touchdown! Thomas, his third career touchdown. When you get big guys moving like that, Barry Sanders, eat your heart out. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show as we roll on, a review of the first half in which the Vikings lead the Packers 24 to 10. We'll be back. Trying to beat the Packers at Lambeau. The only division losses Mike Holmgren's ever suffered at Lambeau Field his first year back in 1992. The last time the Vikings, if they hold on, were 5 0 was way back in 1975. Our primetime football menu rolls on. Here's what's coming up Sunday night on ESPN. How about those Falcons? Jamal Anderson and the 3-1 Atlanta Falcons facing a New York Giants team in search of a little more production at offense. And then, on Monday night, a battle of Florida. Dan Marino and the Dolphins go north to take on Mark Brunel on the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive networks for primetime NFL football. Now let's go back to a... A wet, certainly not frozen the tundra of Lambeau Field. And Al Michaels and Al, what are the numbers? I think last 51 quarters until today, Green Bay allowed four touchdown passes. In the first half alone, they've allowed three. Minnesota's still having fun, aren't they? Well, Chris, uh, interestingly, this game started out pretty quietly tonight. It was only 3 nothing at the end of the first quarter, but an explosive Minnesota offensive attack in the second quarter, resulting in a 24-10 halftime lead. Jake Reed... Got it started with a game tied. He got Newsom spun around, stayed inbounds, and scored. And then Randy Moss, the great-looking rookie out of Marshall, has already scored five touchdowns this season. This number five as Minnesota leads by a score of 24 to 10, Dan. And uh, very few teams have had a quarter like the Vikings just had. Oh, boy, that was something to see. Now, we all know Fritz Shermer, one of the best defensive coordinators of all time, has made adjustments yeah. before. You know he's had a busy 12 minutes in the Green Bay locker room. I think what they really need to do, regain control of the line of scrimmage. They're getting whipped up front by the guys from Minnesota. No, they really are, Dan. But, you know, don't count out Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers. Just when you think you got them beat, as probably Minnesota feels like they do in the locker room right now, he's going to come out and he's going to start flying. The ball will be flinging all over the place. Just a question, I think, of how bad this weather is going to get. I mean, it's getting pretty nasty right now. Well, clearly it, uh, it behooves Minnesota to play in, in these conditions with a 14-point lead. And we'll see if they can maintain it and remain unbeaten. They'd be the only team in the NFC at 5-0. It has begun to rain sideways. Yep. Are you kidding me? In Green Bay, it is pouring. As we start the third quarter, Ryan Longwell to kick off for Green Bay. Minnesota will get the ball. They lead by two touchdowns. There's lightning in the area. The ball bounces at the 20, fielded by David Palmer, who brings it back from the nine and swings to the outside and brings it back close to midfield, thrown out of bounds by Tyrone Williams at the 46. Leslie, how you doing? <laughs> oh, God, Al. <laughs> at the half, Denny Green said that he's most impressed with their pass protection. He wants that to continue. Mike Holmgren told his team, we have been in tougher spots than this. He said, keep the sideline alive. And then he told them, weather is not a factor. Oh. I said, weather is not a factor? Back to you, Al. You know, the Leslie, we've talked to accounting, and they are going to pay for your $300 <laughs> haircut tomorrow. We I, promise. I appreciate it. Okay. Leslie, that you're doing that with a smile speaks volumes. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. Now we've got the official stopping play here. The ball looked like it rolled back about a yard and a half. You know what I think is interesting is the Green Bay Packers had to kick off, and they kicked off into the wind. It is a, right now a, a swirling wind as 
It is Smith. Picks up a yard, maybe two. Tackled by Darren Sharper. And when you play in this kind of weather, as a quarterback, you have to make sure that your center knows that the ball is dry. He can he can request a dry football from the umpire. And they'll do everything they can to accommodate you as long as there's enough time in the play clock. And secondly, when you're a quarterback, you have to get more of your hand on that football to make sure that it comes out right. Well, it's partially dry, but it gets wet in a hurry. Second down and nine. From the 48 to stay on the ground with Robert Smith, who nudges his way to the 50-yard line. It'll be third down and six. Well, this is a situation now where Green Bay needs their number one defense in the league against the rush to take over. They just can't allow the Vikings to grind anything out on the ground and chew up the clock. They have got to force Randall Cunningham to put the ball in the air to sustain drives. It's time to earn that ranking. And 66-year-old Fritz Shermer, I'll guarantee you he made a bucket full of adjustments at halftime. Fritz feels like he's about 96 right yeah. now. Third down and <laughs> six. And here they come from the 50-yard line. Everybody coming. And Randall gets it away and finds a wide open Chris Carter. And a stutter step nets him a huge gain to the 15-yard line. Run right out there by Darren Sharper, 35 yards. If you're going to blitz and you're a secondary player coming out of the secondary, you've got to get there quick because you're coming from a deeper spot. That time Randall saw the blitz coming. He stood in there. He knew that they weren't going to get to him very quickly. And he had time to deliver a ball 15 yards downfield. Well, the names are Stussy, McDaniel, Christie, Dixon, and Stringer. The starting five up front for the Minnesota Vikings. Right now, they, they are dominating the line of scrimmage. Cunningham has thrown for 314 yards. And this is Leroy Horde. You know, normally we pointed it out for years that when a quarterback throws for 300 yards more often than not, they lose the game. But here's a case of a guy throwing for 314 yards, 33 minutes into a game. And his team leading and trying to go up by three touchdowns. And what's even more impressive is that he's doing it in this weather. Yes, it is. No, so I, don't, I, mean, I, you don't can't, I mean, you can't feel it at home, but the wind is blowing, it's swirling, the rain is coming down, and it's noisy on top of it all. Second down and four. Here's Smith. And he takes it to the six, and that should be a first down. Randall Cunningham tonight is averaging... 15.7 yards per pass attempt. Now, seven is real good. <laughs> Eight is almost Hall of Fame. Fifteen is otherworldly. Oh, Leroy Butler still down on the ground, clutching his left ankle. You know, I felt before the game that the weather definitely works in favor of the Vikings because of the way they run their offense. And when you're on the road and you're playing against a team that's heavily favored against you, weather like this is something that is your that really does work in your favor, Al. It slows down the defensive pass rush. It slows down the pursuit. And certainly the Vikings have really taken advantage of that. Well, I know something that is huge for Minnesota. And, and that is simply this. We're going to take a commercial. That's what's simply this. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> I'm staying tuned. Roy Butler sitting on the sideline. He hurt his ankle. You can see right here Robert Smith falls on Roy Butler's, actually both ankles. Could be a high ankle sprain. That's usually the way that thing happens. Now it's first and goal. Mike Pryor is in there in place of Butler. And Cunningham throws. And Chris Carter was the intended receiver. And he was covered by the linebacker, Brian Williams. The point I was going to make before we went to commercial is the Green Bay Packers have owned this division. And the Vikings have been struggling to get to that upper level. You can never be on that upper level until you beat them in their stadium. And I'm sure Denny Green, who does have a winning record yet, Mike Goldman, has made that, you know, evident in their meetings this week. But they've not won here at Lambeau. Right. What a monstrous achievement this would be for the Vikings. Not since Green's first year, 92, second down and goal from the seven. And a little... Uh, miscommunication there with Carter actually wasn't that wasn't that win at Milwaukee 
Uh, I don't know that he's question. won here. I don't think he's won here at Lambeau. But then again, you That's know. right. I keep forgetting. Well, yeah, they That's used to play so many games in Milwaukee every year. You know, it's the way we felt in Cincinnati when we went up to Cleveland, Dan. You know, Cleveland was oh. a big rival in the 80s. You know, they, they controlled the division for many years, and we would have to go in there and beat them. So we, and that's what we made us feel like we were ready to really tackle. Same with us and the Dallas Cowboys. Well, we looked at up. Green won here in 92, and then he won at County Stadium in 93. Okay. But since then, he hasn't won. Third down and goal. Cunningham guns it, and nobody is there. Intended for Andrew Glover, the tight end, who was on the ground, fourth down. Well, talk about serving notice if the Vikings are able to pull this off. And, of course, they're a long ways away from doing so. We have been told that the severe weather is moving through the Green Bay area, and already it appears to be slowing down a little bit as far as the intensity of the rain. I don't know if that's good news or bad <laughs> news for Green Bay, though. Well, the good news for Green Bay is their defense stiffened in a situation where they could have been down by three touchdowns and will be fortunate to be down by 17 instead as Gary Anderson attempts a 25-yard field goal. And that is his second of the night. 11-17 left in the third. Minnesota now leading Green Bay by 17 at Lambeau. Professor one, John Randall. <laughs> The effort. You know, not for quarterbacks, he's not effervescent, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's why he plays on the defensive line. Well, he is really, I mean, we talked about it earlier. I mean, he is he wreaks so much havoc on the football field, not only with his play, but with his mouth. He's talking the whole time. You know, much like Brett Favre is at, as quarterback, is the way he is as a defensive lineman, just always into the game, always yapping at somebody. But he makes plays, and that's the most important. You can see he's already yet. He's not even on the field yet. And you know what else he does, Boomer, that all the really great ones do? They elevate the play of the players around them. Absolutely. Every guy on that defensive line plays better because he's on the field with John Randall. Such is the impact of Chris Carter on Jake Reed and Randy yeah. Moss. Mitch Berger to kick off for Minnesota. And this is Roel Preston, who's already... One one back from 101 and this from a yard deep in the end zone. And this time he runs it back to the 21 yard line. So here comes Randall live. And now we'll look at Randall on tape. Some highlights from the first half. As always, active, whether he's an under tackle or defensive end, making his presence felt. And in fact, even when he's on the sideline. Oh, I love life. <laughs> Remember, there were actually people who speculated that when Henry Thomas, the other fine defensive tackle of the Vikings, moved on to Detroit, that it was going to have a, a negative impact on John Randall's career. And boy, that's sure proved to be wrong. This is Raymond Harris as Green Bay tries to reestablish some semblance of a ground game with Verba out and Matt Willig in. And it was behind Willig's block that time that Harris was able to spring free for a first down. You know, there are a lot of defensive linemen that made a lot of money this offseason, and he was the lead one. As you can see right there, it uh, looks like he has a little bit of a cramp. For Orlando Thomas, right. who already has an interception tonight. But going back to John Rell, he's he signed a new contract, a big contract and really was the first guy out of the box that kind of set the tone for everybody else. And out of all those guys, he's the guy that deserves it. How do you negotiate with a guy like that, though, when he starts making faces at you like that? <laughs> I'd give him everything. <laughs> all right, Captain, we're going to have a coin toss now. This is the team. We're called back at Green Bay. First down and 10 for Green Bay at the 35-yard line. And the catch is made by Mark Chimura. For a gain of five, we talked about the Vikings' second quarter. First team in the 90s to score three touchdowns in a quarter, either here or Milwaukee. 265, the yardage, most by a team in one quarter since 91, and more than the Packers had allowed 34 more than any given game this season on an average. And a halftime lead of 14 or more points, something that hasn't happened in a long time in Packer land. And this is Raymond Harris picking up a couple. It'll be third down and about two. By the way, that uh, injury update on, on left tackle Ross Verba, he has a bruised 
shin. And we've been told by the Packer people that uh, his return is questionable. This is the part of uh, Brett Favre's game. He's pantomiming out there. <laughs> He's they, interesting. I, I don't know necessarily really that, that that does anything, but he certainly is an interesting guy to watch. I mean, he is uh, does some things. <laughs> he really stole that. Third down and three as Travis Jervy picks up the first down and gets ridden out of bounds with a move of change up at the 48-yard line. This is where guys like Brett Favre and Travis Jervy and Mark Chamara can really lift this football team they have to really start getting going here they have to kind of just get in the huddle kind of talk to each other yell at each other a little bit and get their sense of urgency a little bit higher well they 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 broke the huddle a little quicker they're they're starting to look like maybe it's dawning on them that this is important first down and this is Jervy swinging to the outside gets into Minnesota territory and takes it to the 45 Jervy for a pickup of six burger. tackled there by Pete Bershick I mean, in weather like this, fatigue is not a factor. You're not going to get winded. You're not going to get overheated. Get in the huddle. Get out of the huddle and run a play. And down by 17, a very big series here for Green Bay. Shimura, a good pin block at the point attack. A nice block by Adam Timmerman. Henderson leads upfield. Just good, solid run blocking at the corner. Second down and four. Over 45 to the ground they stay in Jersey. So here's a team with no ground game to speak of, but going to the ground, down by 17 to try to get back in it so far successfully. They have to pick up the pace, and that's what they're doing. And what this will do, this will help with the play action passes as well. And when we get down into the red zone, we'll see Mike Holmgren do that. I mean, he will work off the play action, and especially if Jervy is running like this and effectively as he has been. The last couple plays. Well, I'm sure in that offensive huddle, they're looking at one another in disbelief that they have yet to score a touchdown. Keep in mind that touchdown was on a kickoff return by Preston. Offensively, they got a field goal. Here's an end around. This is Antonio Freeman inside the 30, and Freeman takes it to the 29 yard line for a gain of nine. It's amazing what a running game can do for you just in a small series like this. You can start running all kinds of plays off of things. This looks like the way the Packers started this game. You know, their first drive of the game, they marched all the way down the field. They had a penalty that set them back. Then they kind of fiddled, you know, what it around a little bit and then didn't get much out of it. They have got to finish a drive. Raymond actually got 10, and that's enough for the first down. To the 28 yard line, and they give it to Raymond Harris, and he bursts through the ball. Oh, ball the 22, loses the football, but Green Bay Ooh. recovers it. Harris, a guy who hadn't fumbled in Chicago, but he's been putting it on the ground here in Green Bay the last three games. And Matt Willig is the man who recovers it. Harris had fumbled the ball a couple times prior to tonight's game. And that wins him a trip over to the doghouse. Oh, and it came out cleanly. That hit by Eddie McDaniel, the middle linebacker, put a hand right on the ball. Second down five, in comes Jersey. Travis takes it to the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and two with six minutes, 18 seconds left in the third. Minnesota leading 27 to 10. And what has gotten Jervy in Holmgren's doghouse before? Travis Jervy has been known to put the ball on the ground. But I think he also feels like tonight that he wants somebody to pick it up. He wants the speed in there. And that's exactly what Travis Jervy offers the Green Bay Packers. Fallon Colonnay is the injured Viking. Green Bay's had the ball for nine plays on this drive. Eight of them have been run. And when play resumes, it'll be third down and two. Dennis Green, a guy who uh, had one year left on his contract. We mentioned at the top of the show, this was a team in flux. The league wanted one primary owner, not a bunch of owners, as had been the case. Tom Clancy, the author, tried to put together a deal. The team was conditionally sold to him. The financing didn't pass muster. In came Red McCombs from San Antonio, a man who has owned the San Antonio Spurs of the NBA on two separate occasions, and the Denver Nuggets once, and there he is, 70-year-old billionaire from Texas, and he extended the contract, and Red does not know what it's like to lose. 4-0 in the preseason, 
4-0 in the regular season and leading 27-10 here in the third. It ain't that easy, Red. Galladay out. Clemens comes in along the defensive front. Third down and two. Big play for Green Bay here. And it's Clark looking to throw. Going to the end zone and picked off because the ball floated. He had Freeman open, but the ball floated on him, and Robert Griffith with the pickoff. When Brett Favre released that football, at least from here, Boomer, I thought that was a touchdown. Now we talked about it earlier. When you want to throw the ball into the wind, you gotta you gotta drill it. You gotta throw it out there. You can't let it hang. That ball hung a little bit on Brett, and you can see the wind take it. Look at this thing. The, the, the nose is coming up, but it's actually like a, a knuckleball. You have to you have to throw that ball into the wind, and you gotta you gotta make it spiral if you can. Certainly, Brett is very upset. You can see he's an emotional football player. Look how wide open Antonio Freeman is. And Boomer's description right on. And oh, how frustrating. The Packers needed that touchdown in a big way. Instead, Minnesota from the 20-yard line. And Robert Smith. You know, the anomaly in this game is that coming into the game, so much was made about Favre picking apart the Viking secondary yep. and the Viking secondary has been porous but still two picks tonight Minnesota threw it all with 10 interceptions and the Vikings actually lead the league in interceptions thought going in was that the Viking corners don't have the ability to run deep it with looks, the Packers receiver it looks like it's the other way around the night, sure, though. sure does second and ten daring him to throw and he does and the catch is made there by Jake Reed three yards shy of the first down third and three Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser official NFL sponsor Southwest Airlines proud sponsor of the NFL an official airline of the Super Bowl and Chrysler engineered to be great cars now the interesting thing about the Minnesota Vikings receivers I can only think of one drop ball and that was Jake Reed in the first quarter dropped one over the middle since then, not one drop ball. Leroy Butler is back in the game for Green Bay. It's third and two. Minnesota at the 28. Four and a half minutes to go in the third period. Flares down all over the game. It was uh, Stussy moving. Ball start, number 73, five yards. It's still third down. Dan, let's say that along that front, Randall McDaniel, a guy we don't talk about very often, but we were talking to him last night, uh, talking to Dennis Green about him. Here's a guy, he should be a first ballot. Well, he'll join you in Canton someday, you know that. I don't think there's any question about that. And, and he will have the distinction of, of being the possessor of the worst stance ever of anybody <laughs> in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Worst stance, best results. His stance is really awful. But man, can he play. Third down and seven. And Cunningham slings it into the arms of Carter up at the 32 and a first down. When you look at this Vikings team, guys, I mean, you see McDaniel, you see Carter. Who will be I in mean, the Hall of Fame as absolutely. well. Absolutely. I mean, they have their share of superstars on this football team. And Denny Green has molded them into a high-powered offense that it just doesn't seem to me like I, the penalty didn't affect them. They don't care. They can go back and get seven yards, ten yards if they want to. And it all starts up front, and you can see right there the job that they're doing. Just look how McDaniel held his ground. Harris comes on a blitz and doesn't even gain a half a yard. Out of the ground. Robert Smith for a couple. Tackled by Santana Dotson. You know, I, I really applaud Red McCombs for his vision in not making... Dennis Green go through this season in the final year of his contract because I know that he has some detractors of which I am not one this man has a great eye for personnel this guy gets his players to play for him with tremendous intensity and he is an outstanding football coach and all he does is win yeah second down and eight Here we go, going deep for Moss. A little too far, though. Moss looking one way, looking inside, had to look back outside over the other shoulder and just off his fingertips. Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, hey, you know, maybe we better be off, the field, you know, off 25 yards. I mean, this is getting to the point where it's ridiculous now. 
Well, again, it's Tyrone Williams who gets abused a little bit by Randy Moss. Does, should he have laid out for this, Boomer? Uh, do you gain he, anything by laying out? I, I don't necessarily know that you do. I don't think that he realized how, how much the wind was pushing the ball. And I, and I saw Randall's reaction after Randall Cunningham. And Randall thought that he should have had him. So he knew that he overthrew him a little bit. Even though it's an incompletion, though, that destroys a corner's confidence. Absolutely. Third down and eight. Do it again. Only a three-man rush. No pressure. And the pass is caught by Carter for a first down at the 48-yard line. So the Vikings with a first down and a reminder, college football Saturday, Notre Dame, Arizona State headlining it. The Nittany Lions against Minnesota. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska take on Texas A&M and Georgia Tech against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Very fatiguing to play on a wet field. Your legs get really tired. And right now, the Packers' defensive line starting to look a little bit like they looked in the second half of the Super Bowl against Denver. Plug it. Here's Robert Smith. Tackle there by Vaughn Booker. Well, things are going to be pretty giddy for the Minnesota Vikings if this keeps up. They have an off week. And then the Vikings play the Washington Redskins, the at the moment winless Redskins at home. Then at Detroit, at Tampa Bay. When you look at the second half of the of the season for Minnesota, their schedule is a lot softer than the first half. So this team has a full head of steam going, and who knows where they're going to wind up. We still have that thing alive. No dome team has ever gone to a Super Bowl. That's right. Second down and nine from the 49-yard line. Cunningham throws, and coming back is Jake Weed. And he did not make the catch. Covered by Newsom. Again, uh, the, the crowd has not left here with a long face since uh, 1995. Miami from 71 through 74, and of course that included their perfect season team, 27 straight wins at home. And then Green Bay needing just two to tie, but in uh, tremendous jeopardy right now. The only thing I could tell you, all it takes is one turnover. And momentum shifts, and, if, and points are put on the board, then it really gets down to crunch time. Third down to nine, and whistles before the snap. McKenzie, was he induced is the question. Jerry Ball stars, says yes. number 82 of the offense, five yards. It's still third down. Well, they don't care. They'll just throw it deep down the field. It doesn't matter. They have got to get somebody, <laughs> though, in a green and gold uniform to make a play right now up front. Somebody's got to disrupt things. The way John Randall disrupts things when he's on the line for Minnesota. Somebody has got to get in Randall's face, sack him, knock him down, force a bad pass. Who's going to come up with a big play for the Packers? Only three linemen in a down stance. And Randall's going to swing it down for Randy Moss, who makes the catch and takes it to the 10-yard line. Well, I guess the answer is nobody. Really, what Ooh. happens here is that you have two deep safeties, and Pryor has got to make that play. He's got to get on the sideline. They cannot allow Randy Moss to go floating down the sideline without anybody near him. Well, what a throw by Randall Cunningham, too, with the wind. Boomer flipping all around here. This thing's got some velocity on it. And right here, Williams actually loses track of where Randy Moss goes again. Now, you can see Williams looking for Pryor. Where are, where's the help over the top? And you know something that Randall was rolling to the sideline there. So you have to expand with him. But he had the ability, because of a lack of pass rush, as you well know, to come to a complete stop, square up, and throw. First and goal from the 10, Robert Smith. Charles Evans is in the game. Charles Evans with the carry to the eight. As the third quarter winds down, Evans normally a blocking back. It's a rare carry, and Mike Holmgren very concerned. 15 minutes to play. Minnesota leading by a score of 27 to 10 as Monday Night Football resumes after this from our ABC station. Randy Moss, and you know his story, the kid who was passed over because of his past, 
The Vikings were very confident he was going to be there when they picked 21st. And so far, so good. He keeps his head on straight. What a career ahead of that guy. And this is Leroy Hoare taking it to the two, where it'll be third down and goal. So the Vikings up already by 17, knocking on the door and doing something that almost no team has done here in years. Total domination. Whoa. 460 total yards. More than doubling up the Packers at Lambeau Field. Take a picture of that. A pace of more than 600 yards. Now you pick a choice. Do you want to throw it up the quarter or do you want to throw it up the Moss? Third down and goal to keep it on the ground to give it to Horde. And Leroy falls forward, but not far enough. So it's fourth down and goal. Well, they point. went they went to the beef. You know, you got 700 pounds on the right side of the Vikings offensive line behind David Dixon and Corey Stringer. You'd think that if you could pound it up anywhere, that would be the place to do it, especially with a powerful guy like Horde. But good job by Green Bay of stuffing this thing. They're going to kick the field goal, which I find to be a very curious call in as much as Green Bay is still going to have to score three times, even down by 17. On a worst case basis, the Packers would take the ball inside the one and three scores will still get you back into the game even after a field goal. So here's Anderson to make it. 17 point lead 20 points I'm not sure I see a tremendous amount of benefit there but who's to argue with the Vikings in general up by 20 how much how much you put on the fact that 30 sounds good yes and Deirdre Boomer Esiason and Leslie Visser scoreboard lights reflecting off the uh, windows fronting the luxury suites here quiet crowd and a crowd that is not used to seeing their Packers trailing by 20. The rain has slowed now. Whether it'll continue to be somewhat manageable, we'll, we'll wait and see. Mitch Berger to kick off. And Roel Preston back to receive. Preston's already run one back, 101 yards for a touchdown. This one from the two-yard line. Good tackle made up at the 19-yard line by Robert Tate, the wide receiver. Set his sights on him, knocked him down inside the 20. And here comes Favre and the gang down by 20. 13-22 <laughs> to go. Boogie night. Shake it up, baby. From the 20-yard line, first down as Brett Favre retreats. Set up the screen, and it's a bad-looking screen, and the ball is caught by... Derby, but for a three-yard loss, and let's get an update from Leslie Visser. Les? Al, the fans are wet and the players are wet, but the equipment is dry. It's kept in these ice shanties. That's what you go ice fishing in, which I have tried one time. <laughs> it's also where the video still photographers are there in there taping the formation, so that's one guy who's dry. Al? Mm. Good idea. <laughs> Who did you go ice fishing with, Leslie? I went during the uh, Super Bowl. I went on the Madden Cruiser, as a matter of fact. Didn't oh, it's terrific. Oh, no. <laughs> Second down and 13. That's a $500 fine, Leslie. Far throwing deep, and it is Brooks trying to make the catch, and it is picked off, intercepted by Griffith. The third Minnesota pick tonight, and second for Griffith. Well, some picks come right to you. Some interceptions you really have to earn. That was a tremendous effort by Robert Griffith. Look at him go and get the ball his fifth interception of the season. Right with 11 picks, collectively leading the league. Griffith now with five interceptions. Ty Law had led individually coming into the game. The New England corner with four, and Griffith has two tonight. And now Robert Smith with two up some yardage and two up some of the clock with it. A gain of eight. Mike Holmgren, and it will be an interesting off week here in Green Bay. I think knowing Mike well enough, that is not a look of concern. That is a look of anger. Mike Holmgren is a volatile, emotional coach, and when he feels that his team does not respond to the way he has treated them or prepared them, 
He's quick to boil over. And I think he's moving past the old 212 Fahrenheit point. Yep. And that rain will not extinguish the flame one iota right now. Second and one, and here's a first down for Robert Smith. Takes the ball to the 44. Mike Holmgren here at home. He's coached 50 games in this ballpark. And all he's done is won 44 of them. Best record at home for a head coach in the NFL history. Bill Cowern, Three Rivers, 42-8. and eight. John Madden, third. Guy Chamberlain, fourth. George Seifert, now at CBS, is fifth. Where did Guy Chamberlain go? <laughs> well, Guy Chamberlain was actually, he coached in Canton for a while. First and ten at the 44. He was one coach who couldn't go into television because there was no television. <laughs> Here's Robert Smith. I'll tell you about Guy Chamberlain shortly, but first, some commerce. Monday Night Football being brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Claritin. AT&T, it's all within your reach. And the Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Boomer, take note of this. It does not happen very often where we pose a question and Al does not regurgitate it immediately. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's the wind and the rain. I'm <laughs> getting frazzled here. <laughs> this is Randall Cunningham, and he's going for seven more. And getting position touchdown oh, he's oh, unstoppable <laughs> simultaneous possession goes to the offense this is Randy you have arrived what a statement I, there's no moss growing on this tundra unbelievable Again, just throwing the ball up letting the receivers go up and get it for you it's one-on-one -on -one Williams on Moss and you can just see those receivers go after the football. They are aggressive. And a little they, page out of the Michael Irvin book about how to move a guy on by a little bit. Absolutely. Chris Carter is the same way. What a terrific play. What a terrific brand of receiving that we are seeing tonight. Out of a baby. It's out of an NFL baby. Anderson for the point after. Randy Moss and the Vikings in a route. Sixteen remaining in the fourth quarter at the stonily silent Lambeau Field. <laughs> what was that? What in was that? Green Bay. Well, that was, was that a, a lot dolphin? Of, a lot of standing water here. We'll do anything to promote next week's game. Miami <laughs> at Jacksonville. Berger kicking. Fielded by Preston. And Roel brings it back out to the 37-yard line. A reminder Thursday on ABC. He's missed a right to all of those who've ever been wrong. Vengeance. Unlimited. ABC. Thursday. Vikings will be off Thursday. They have a bye week. And Randy Moss, who will be a nightmare for oh. defensive coordinators for the rest of the season. Well, every now and then, you're witness to a statement game. And I think for Randall Cunningham, Dennis Green, and the rest of the Vikings, this was one of those. From the 37-yard line, it is Henderson picking up about six. And it, I guess it begets the question now. I mean, how how good are the Vikings? You're, you're always afraid to anoint individuals and teams after one or two or three performances, but whew, they're a pretty good team. Oh, they really are a good team. And I, and I applaud their strategy tonight. They figured, hey, look, we got bigger receivers. We're going to go after their smaller DBs, and we can get them locked up one-on-one, -on -one, throw the ball up, and let them go after it. And Randall Cunningham has been amazing tonight. This is Jervy. Randall tonight, 19 of 30, 434 <laughs> yards, and for the second week in a row, he's going four touchdowns. Great for the old game. guys, baby. Yes, not, sir. <laughs> not bad for a backup, huh? Boomer <laughs> looking what? for a new contract. Right? Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> this might be the only team we've done so far this year, Boomer, that doesn't need you. <laughs> Neither team needs me. Every, hey. I, every game we've done so far this season, 
the best quarterback on the field was the guy sitting next to me. You're just trying to get rid of me. No, no. <laughs> No, I'm trying to be nice, but you want to get rid of me. You hurt me. Do a little dump off to Raymond Harris. And it's a minimal gain hit there by Dixon Edwards. You know, you look at the Vikings. You've got Randall Cunningham, Randy Moss, John Randall, Randall McDaniel. What is it about Randall's in Minnesota? Randy's. Well, give Dennis Green a lot of credit. I, you know, you alluded to it earlier, Dan, that he was a good judge of talent. He knows how to get guys motivated. He is a winner. I mean, he has won. He's been in the playoffs. I mean, I know it's frustrating that you have to go through Green Bay and Detroit and Tampa Bay. All have good football teams or had good football teams uh, in the Central. And you could tell that Dennis Green really knows this business. Well, you can see right there that, and I agree with you, Boomer, that hit sends Raymond Harris to the Green Bay sideline. Dixon Edwards, uh, that was a, uh, a crunching tackle catching Harris after the spin. Second down and six. Far. And that's incomplete at the 30-yard line intended for Freeman. I would, I would think about calling them the, the Randy Vikings, except, you know, Randy means having a coarse manner, lustful or lecherous. As you should know. <laughs> yes. we, we know a few uh, Randy people. <laughs> and we'll we'll leave it at there. We will. No, the, oh, maybe one, we won't. <laughs> no, the one thing that we probably should talk about is you know, where, where does this leave the Green Bay Packers? You know, it's a long season. It needs them wanting goes, Dorsey Levens back well, really badly. It, it also gives them a wake-up call, too. I mean, you know, 4-0 does not mean you're going to win the Super Bowl. And, and every team... Every team needs to have a little bit of a wake-up call, no matter who they are. Third down and six, and now it's fourth down. Let's get an update from Leslie. Al, remember last week Bryce Hunter was knocked out of the game against Detroit, the wide receiver for Tampa Bay? Well, the news is all good about Bryce. He was knocked out for four minutes, but he flew home with the team. He went to meetings all week long. He was kept out of the Giant game as a precaution, but he will be back after the bye week to play against Carolina. Al? Good news, of course, Mark Carrier was fined for that hit last week, and he was suspended for a game. Right. Yeah, in effect, the fine was the one-week suspension, which cost him about 28 grand. The crowd booing the decision to punt. And Trader is able to down it at the one-yard line after the Landetta boot. But the clock ticking down, 8-10 to go, and the Vikings preparing for a very happy ride home. Kings. Will we see a 99-yard touchdown pass out? Well, we've seen everything but <laughs> to this point. You talk about insult to injury. And they start from the one with a 27-point lead. And they'll give themselves some breathing room. It's a four-yard gain here for Robert Smith. The receivers tonight for Minnesota so much made of uh, their weapons, adding Moss to Carter and Reed. And, and that's a, a pretty good little rundown. 190 receivers. Ooh. Wow. You no, know, it's interesting that their strategy was to do that because Fritz Shermer and his defensive secondary, they like to play aggressive. They like to get up into people's faces. They don't leave their safeties back deep a lot of the times. So you know if you can protect, you can throw the ball up and make plays like the Vikings have tonight. It's going to be a long night for that secondary. Second and six. And Robert Smith up to the 10 yard line, setting up a third and one. You know, I was thinking back to last year, gents, when the Packers lost, and then Mike Holmgren decided he was going to give them the by, part of the bye week off before a big Monday night game at New England. He gave and them the entire, the entire bye week. week, right? And it sort of rejuvenated them. Now he, he has a, a much different situation, I think, here, because among other things, they have a bye week, but then they have a Thursday night game. So they actually play in 10 more days at Detroit. I think what will happen is they'll go in tomorrow, they'll get chewed out, they'll practice a little bit, and then they'll have to come back on Friday. Third down and one. And that's caught up at the 17 by Chris Carter for a first down. It's a funky kind of schedule for Green Bay. They're off until the 15th at Detroit. Then they're off the following Sunday and don't play again until the 25th. So in effect, they're gonna play only one game over the next 19 days. 
which is probably they need to get healthy. I have a few guys, Nick, but you know, that last play, Dan, you yeah. see it. I mean, it looks so simple, right? <laughs> nice execution. Yeah, but 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 Chris Carter goes down and picks the ball off the ground. I mean, it, it's you know these are the type of receivers they have. Here's the schedule of Baltimore, and then San Francisco comes in here on November 1st. Then we see Green Bay at Pittsburgh on Monday night, November 9th. They'll be looking forward to November 22nd in Minnesota, though, I can tell you that. Smith. Smith. Tackled by Holland Twist. You no, know, Dan, you've had uh, a number of coaches through the years, and, and every coach is a little bit different, but I would think that Dennis Green, while he's probably uh, quite impressed with his team right now, he, he feels good about where they are, he even has to kind of put a lid on them right now because, you know, we're only really one quarter of the way through the season. And I, Hasn't that always struck you, though, about Dennis, that he doesn't seem to be that mercurial guy that goes up and down that roller coaster? He, he's he got a plan. He, he's pretty steady about it. He doesn't get overly upset when they lose, and he doesn't seem to tap dance off the field when they win either. And he is, as they would say, one tough hombre as Smith carries the ball. Dennis has been through more personal travails and on and off the field stuff in Minnesota in six years and yet he has survived and survived brilliantly and I asked him last night I said what was the worst time for you and he's had a pretty turbulent six years and he said that whole Lou Holtz thing remember they had ten different owners and a couple of them apparently went to Holtz who quits at Notre Dame and the indication is that Holtz is going to get Dennis's job in Minnesota he said that was the bottom well that has to be I mean how could you take your team to the playoffs and in the middle of a season have to listen to that I mean it's disconcerting not only for the coach but it's got to be disconcerting for the players too, who believe in him third and five and that's knocked down by Reggie White some people put on an air of self-confidence because they know they have to if they're in a leadership position they don't want anybody to see them crack with Dennis Green, I don't think anybody who knows him thinks that's the case. His self-confidence is very, very real, and it goes to the core of his being. Dennis Green loves Dennis Green and could care <laughs> less what anybody else thinks about him. He, he, is, he is one confident man. He even loves the 65 pounds he's lost. Derek Hayes will run back the putt. This is the first punt tonight for Minnesota off the foot of Berger. And Mays brings it back to the 36-yard line. I'm surprised Berger wasn't a little stiff. Yeah, wait, wait, he's, been, he been all night? Well, he's been kicking off. <laughs> Mays yeah, a little has, shaken. But maybe he forgot how to punt. It's always a good sign when your punter forgets how to punt. Reminder after the game, you can stay tuned to ABC for late local news or other programming. We're over to ESPN for a post-game show. Man, I hope that wasn't a live chick. This is Doug Peterson in the game. And the new quarterback hits Antonio Freeman. So Brett Favre given the rest of the night off. Hard to argue with that decision to get him out of the game. You know, but knowing Brett the way I know him, and I'd be in the same situation many times, you don't ever want to come off that field, and you don't ever want to come off that field without having something positive happen for you. And the problem is now is he's got a... You no, know, he's got to feel this way until their next game, which is a long way away. Peterson from the 36. And the ex-Miami Dolphin throws, and that's almost intercepted at the 20-yard line by Jimmy Hitchcock. Well, Brett Favre had gotten off to a great start this season. Ten touchdown passes in his first four games, but the Viking defense has risen to the occasion. Pressure. Three interceptions, two of them by Griffith. And uh, that defense combined with Randy Moss and Randall Cunningham and Robert Smith and Chris Carter and Jake Reed. And it's been a near perfect night for the Vikings. A struggle and incomplete Tyrone Davis, the intended receiver. That last interception by Griffith was the way that a deep safety goes after a ball that's thrown on the sideline. Now, that we didn't see that on the other side of the field. The safeties weren't getting over there. At that time, Griffith made it that, on that one interception. He made a really nice break on the football. And that's the way big play defensive backs 
have to react. And it was an adjustment for them, Boomer, because in the game last week against Chicago, they weren't getting over there. Absolutely. And, and so they got chastised, I'm sure, this week, but they responded. Good for them. Third and 10, Peterson has to duck away and then guns it to the sideline and is caught there by Schrader, who gets rammed out of bounds, short of the first down by two. This is You can see right here, this is the interception by Griffith. Brett tries to look him off, and Griffith knows where the ball's going, and he goes after the football, and he makes a terrific play. That's a great play by a safety. And Denny Green said at the top of the show, he said, hey, we've been giving up a lot of yards, but we have a lot of interceptions, and to me, an interception's worth 100 yards. You know, you wonder if that's a spin, or what is that, you know? Well, he's always wanted his guys to go for the big play. Right. He's always drafted and developed that type of an athlete. Yep. And here's Henderson. And that big play guy he got was Randy Moss. And we've, we've talked about this throughout the game about Moss. But one reason that Dennis Green was able to draft Randy Moss is Dennis Green at that point really didn't have an owner. He had to run it by. Remember, Tom Clancy had tried to buy the team, couldn't. Red McCombs was still out of the picture. Roger Hedrick was going to be out of the picture. See, he was the only guy that Dennis had to go to. In effect, it was Dennis's house, so to speak. As he put it last night, he said, if I owned the house, I was going to paint it. <laughs> and he did, and he painted it with Randy Moss. Nobody closed on it yet, did they? Right. It was an escrow. Oh, another interception. It is picked off by Kaylee Wong. And the rookie out of Stanford picks off the fourth Green Bay pass of the night. Just put the punctuation foul, mark. Roughing the passer, number 92 defense. Oop, that'll come back. Half a distance to the goal. First down. Well, that's Dwayne Clemens. Dennis Green, Al, and Boomer was also quick to thank Roger Hedrick for everything that he did still running the Minnesota Vikings, knew, knowing that it was going to be sold to someone else. And he did his job right up to the very end. Mm -hmm. And then left in a most inglorious way. But uh, for a long time, Roger, Roger was the cement because the Vikings, it was such an unwieldy ownership situation. In fact, the league had to get involved and finally say, hey, look, you know, we need a primary owner here. Ten, ten owners just no. doesn't function very well. No, especially when two of them are trying to get Lou Holtz in the middle of the season. First and 10 from the 11. And that's caught inside the five, and Davis takes it in for a touchdown. Three minutes and three seconds left in the game, and the Packers get their first offensive touchdown. The interesting thing about this is that when you look at the Lions and the Tampa Bay game, the same situation, they were, they were so far ahead that the team that was behind was throwing the ball. So you wonder, even though Chicago and St. Louis had good games against them, are their statistics inflated because of the fourth quarters of those particular games? A uh, valid point, Boomer. I'll tell you, they've, they have some big play guys in this team. Along well to the point after. Well, as we all know, it's who's in front at the end of January. But when you looked at the NFC coming into this weekend, I think you looked at the Vikings, you looked at the Packers, and you looked at the 49ers as like the three real quality teams in the NFC. Well, the 49ers lose at Buffalo. The Packers get put away here tonight. You'd have to say right now the Minnesota Vikings, as of this moment, clearly the best team in the NFC. Uh, you know, I, I still think in the end, though, however, Dan, because of how, how weak the NFC East is, that Dallas is going to be around. You know, they, they still have too much talent on that football team. Oh, I don't argue that at and, all. And I I'm think, saying the first week of October, Dallas, I don't think, could handle the Vikings. No, not right now, maybe, but I, I still believe, looking at the talent on that team, yep. you know, that, that that's a team that, you know, would scare me if I had to play them. And Troy will be back. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, you know, Jason Garrett's doing a heck of a job for them. He's 2-1. and one. He had a big game this past week against Washington, but everybody seems to be having a big game against Washington. But you know something you just... This has nothing to do with Dallas, but you look at Dallas and you see Michael Irvin. And then, well, who do you see complimenting Michael Irvin? 
And, and then you look at this receiving core of the Vikings, and it, it's it's almost staggering. Oh, it is. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I, I don't doubt you. Onside kick attempt, and the Packers have recovered it at the 45. Scott McGarahan comes up with the football. So down by 20, 2.59 to play, two-minute warning. It would be a miracle. But... <laughs> Now that other, the other, things have happened. the other wonderful receiving core, obviously out in San Francisco, yes, with Owens and Rice and Stokes, physically very reminiscent of this group here. Of course, they don't have a bad guy chucking the old seed out there either, do they? Well, you know, every week there's going to be major upsets or upsets. I would say this is probably a mild upset just because they're playing on Green Bay's field. Mm -hmm. uh, if this happened in Minnesota, it would be so surprised. But yesterday, Buffalo beat San Francisco. I mean, no team is going to go undefeated in this game. We all know that. And so. you know that there's going to be times where you're going to have a really, really rough week as a football player and as a football team. And you just got to get through those. And the teams that battle through those, Dan, as you well know, are the ones that usually are left standing at the end of the year. How about... These are numbers that you just... <laughs> I've never there. seen. I, hey, I've been there. I know what that's all about. You know, you just forget it. You file it. You shake your head. You know, they, they still have so many more games to go. Second lowest of his Green Bay career. So going to take a big file cabinet to file that one. That, that'll hang with him for a while. Second and 10. That's caught at the 50-yard line. I mean, it's not going to shake his confidence. No, he's he'll still good for that. He's but going to lose some sleep tonight. He'll be upset. He is going to definitely lose some sleep tonight. He's going to be replaying this whole game in his head. But I will tell you, I, I don't know who they playing next, uh, Al? Green Bay? Yeah. On a Thursday night on at Thursday Detroit. Night at Detroit. On the 15th I, you know of what? October. You know, that's going to be a big game because, you know, Detroit plays well at home, especially defensively, as we saw last week. But that's a game where both of these guys, Reggie White and Brett Favre, are going to want to make another statement. Hey, we're back. Third and two, and that's going behind Tremora. <laughs> How about San Francisco losing yesterday with 22 penalties? 22 for a team as disciplined as the 49ers, especially hey. after they, the way they looked the first three weeks of the season. Too. How about Bruce Smith, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've been down that road. When he's healthy. Oh, man. I saw him send you to La La Land once. Oh. <laughs> Boomerville. <laughs> no fun. Uh, you know, and it's kind of the same situation that Steve found himself in yesterday with the new left tackle on the road, road in Buffalo. Yeah. Brought yeah. by Henderson over the middle, and that will be a first down and take us to the two-minute warning. Big loss for the 49ers when they lost Fiore. Hofstra boys. Can't get along without those Hofstra guys, can you guys? Well, as this game winds down, you can take a look at those grim figures for Green Bay. Last time they lost by 20 or more points. Last time here by 20 or more to Chicago in 92. Go back to 83, the last time they allowed this much yardage in the game. And Randall Cunningham tonight has thrown for more yardage against the Green Bay Packers than any opponent in Packer history. Now, there's a guy that will enjoy the bye week. Guys, remember that game? There's a guy who won't. Oh, no, no. Remember that game, Halloween night in 94? Sure. Brett Favre had like 80 yards, 85 yards passing that night. And it, the, the Six entire 15. It rained horizontally oh, it did. the entire game. I felt so badly because they were honoring Gale Sayers and Dick Buckets that night um, at halftime. Yep. And they were out there, and their rain slickers were just Ooh. an horizontal. <laughs> That game was, in a way, a, a, a part of the coming of age of Brett Favre. First and ten. And this is caught by Travis Jervy for a nine-yard pickup. And looking at the faces on the sidelines, two different sidelines, this is what is faced throughout the NFL by every team, every coach, every owner. You know, the euphoria of a big win, something like this, and then the ugliness of a loss. And, and the feeling of disgust and frustration. I sure had, I had more of the latter than the former. Well, so did I, you know, and I don't really miss that. I mean, that, that's the part as a player that people who, do, who never play the game just can't really understand because every game is so analyzed pre and after. Well, I, I had it worse than you, brother. 
I had oh, four. Come on, I was a quarterback. It doesn't get any worse than that. I had four winning seasons in 13 years. One 500 season. So four, I was four, eight, and one. Better than all of us. He was over in Hawaii doing the Islanders, uh, right. cracking coconuts on the beach, <laughs> while we're getting our coconuts cracked in the NFL. You're a wise man, Al. You're exactly right. <laughs> but you know the. Uh, and we'll be back there for the Pro Bowl this year on oh. February 7th. Let's get our first promo win for that. <laughs> Darn right. right. Boomer, that's part of the great thing about being with us this year. Get our room. You're ready. guaranteed a trip to the Pro Bowl. That's right. Yeah. Get our rooms ready at the Kahala. You've got it. The Mandarin. The Mandarin Oriental. Second down and five. And that's incomplete. But I'll be honest with you, Al. I was using code. <laughs> it's, it's nice to get voted to the Pro Bowl, but to have to go and play in it is another thing. You know, who wants to who wants to play in the Pro Bowl in February in 95 degree heat and get there, you know, and get knocked around? Dexter Manley one year sent me into the wall. And I was like, man, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that. Well, I would never make the playoffs, and I'd have to go play in the Pro Bowl yeah. not having played in a game for six weeks. And every year I would have to play across from L.C. Greenwood, <laughs> who just came from the Super Bowl and is in the greatest shape of his life. And I'm going, well, this is really swell. That, they should be playing flag football over there. <laughs> then more guys would go. Third and five. Whoa. Jim Henderson, you can hear that one. Boy, Robert Griffith, he came up and brought a load. <laughs> Look at that. No, he's talking over William Henderson. He's the one who got knocked down, wasn't he? No, oh, Griffith came up and gave a great shot. He yeah, may have yeah, got but, knocked yeah, down. But, yeah, but William Henderson was still running. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> he came up and hit him really. Okay, let's, right, watch. let's watch this. Let's watch. Yeah. Okay, bang. All right, who's on the ground? Griffith. Right, so now he's going to get up and go talk stuff to him. That's the way this league works. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. There's a guy who's had uh, a big night. John Randall, talking about Griffith, number one. Randall always seems to have a pretty big night. And there's the man who's had a huge night. We, I don't know what he's saying, but whatever he's saying, he should be taking a bow right now. Randall, you've been yep. entertaining us for years and years and years. And I know one thing, Al. I'll never forget the night that he went over when he got right. undercut by Carl Banks got back up and threw a touchdown pass. One of the top, one of the best plays I ever saw. At one point, he was the ultimate weapon. He was referred to incomplete. I think what Randall was saying to the camera was, I am never again going into the granite kitchen <laughs> counter reconditioning business. Well, why not? I'm done. You know, that's an it? honorable, that's an honorable oh, profession. There's no question, but he's, he's happy to be back. And, a little Randall package for you. That's Jake Reed. And that got Minnesota in front. Randy Moss adjusting, splitting the defenders, taking it in. And for Mr. Cunningham, a monster night. 442 yards for the second week in a row. Four touchdown passes. And now Peterson going for the end zone, and he has another touchdown to Bill Schrader. Well, this is one of those when they'll look at the box scores at the end of the year. And this, this is one of those games won't be nearly as close as it no. looks like. And this is one of those quarters that just makes the stats look awful. So when you start analyzing things and you start looking at them and you wonder where a lot of the yards and points come from. I mean, this is the third game that's been in a blowout situation for them. It's a nice throw by Peterson, though. Peterson's led them to two touchdowns. Uh, I guess he's their new starter, huh? Yes. <laughs> Who's nope. going to break at the Brett? <laughs> yeah, no quarterback controversy in Minnesota. Just one hearing from yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what was interesting about what Denny Green said yesterday? He, he talked about how he makes all his players know what their roles are on this football team. And I guess that's why he was so strong in his statement that he said that when Brad Johnson comes back, he'll be our quarterback because Randall knows his role. We talked about roles. And, and I guess if it's up front and everybody understands it, then, you know, it heads the controversy off of the pass a little bit. Well, I just don't think you can take a guy like Brad Johnson, who you're paying him the kind of money you're paying oh, him, I, I, the way he's I know. played. I, I, look, I know. He's played terrific. I, I don't discount that. I mean, 
the Vikings are very fortunate to have two players that play that position that can put up numbers like this. It's not but, happening everywhere. But, you know, sooner or later, you know, it doesn't matter what you're paying anybody. I mean, ultimately, they got to perform, and if another guy is performing at such a high level, you know what I mean? I, I just, coaches and players, you have to live. Another onside kick, but this time it's Minnesota. That's Chris Wolf, who played for uh, Dennis Green when Dennis was coaching at Stanford and has uh, ridden the trail with him. Did you ever get hurt and your backup was playing pretty well? Oh, what man. happened when you came back? Oh, you know, th then there's pressure. There's a lot of pressure on you because the fans, you know, they know what they see or they think they know what they see. And if if you put Brad Johnson in there and there's a little bit of faltering going on and it's not really moving, yep. oh, then immediately the fans want the guy that was in there that was moving the football or playing well. So it's, hey. But they, then they've got what they already know they have, a guy right. who can come off the bench and lead the team. This guy's a good quarterback right there, Brad Johnson. So, I, hey, it's, it's a situation that I guess any coach would love to have as long as your team is winning. Yeah, wait till Brad finds out you want him to stay on the bench for a minute. Oh, I'm never going down said to tell that. him right See, now. We're going down to tell right. him right now. Yeah, you would too. Leslie, go over and tell Brad what Boomer <laughs> just said. <laughs> Leslie's still here. I think she left. Uh, Le Leslie's in the uh, the salon. But seriously, I mean, how? how I, I, and I don't, I'm not saying that necessarily that it's going to be this way for the next three or four weeks. But uh, on given on tonight's performance, I mean, this is. Oh, I know. I mean, there hasn't. Been, I mean, there have been a lot of great quarterback performances thus far, but nothing like this. I'll bet you Denny hopes he has that problem. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he does. Nice dilemma to have. An off week for Minnesota coming up. The Vikings are five and zero. Oh. They're the only unbeaten team in the NFC, and they've come into Lambeau Field and handed Green Bay a defeat for the first time in Green Bay since September 3rd, 1995. 25 regular season games and four postseason games and the Vikings have come in and routed the Packers final score 37 to 24 we will wrap it up from Wisconsin in a moment seven Green Bay 24 to the field we go and here's Leslie again Al he broke Joe Montana's single game passing record against the Packers Randall how do you describe this game I just, uh, I just thank God, you know. So many people, you know, who uh, are praying for me and, and just hoping that I do well. I'm just giving God all the glory and all the honor. I don't take any for myself. I thank Him for the people He surrounds me with. It's such a humbling experience. And the Bible says, humble yourself, therefore, under the Lord's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due, uh, in due time. And I just want to be lifted up so I can praise God. That's all. Randall, this wasn't for the NFC Championship, but what does it mean to the Minnesota Vikings? Well, it's great because... You know, there's times when, when things change and, 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 you know, we have a little bit of control, but the main thing is that when you're around great people, like the great coaching staff we have and the offensive line and, and the players we have, I mean, Randy and Chris, Randy's sent straight from God, and Chris has already been here from God, and I just thank him for the defense. And, you know, we've just got a great opportunity to do a lot of things. We just pray to stay healthy and just continue on. You talked about change. How have you changed? <laughs> I tell you what, God has humbled me, and, uh, you know, when you're humbled, through different experiences in your life and you get down in the pits with the people who really work hard each day you learn to be thankful for everything you have and you know when i receive awards and things like that i appreciate them so much now and i'm thankful that i've got a great family my wife and Felic my wife felicity and a little rando and little vashta i thank i thank god for them they're healthy and doing great i just i love playing the game again well it shows i mean no one can say you are over the hill and you must be the best backup in history thanks a lot randall back to you al thank you leslie and uh, we can remind you after the game, stay tuned for ABC, your late local news, or other programming. ESPN has a post-game show. Also tonight on Nightline, the presidential impeachment inquiry, which the House Judiciary Committee voted this evening to begin. Nightline. We'll have more on this tonight. Kenny Wolf, our producer. Craig Jennifer, our director. The head coach established last year. Norm Turner just wants to win one. That is his record in his fifth year. The... Vikings have won the toss and they'll receive. Carrie Blanchard will kick off for the Redskins. Back deep for the Vikings is David Palmer and Mo Williams. And we're underway on a loud crowd here at the Metrodome. And David Palmer, the multifaceted threat, returning for the Vikings. And Palmer is stopped short of the 25-yard line. 
the potent and exciting offense for the Minnesota Vikings and the quarterback Randall Cunningham making his fourth start leading the NFL in the passing rating yet to throw an interception the nuts and bolts of this Minnesota offense is their offensive line Randall McDaniel the veteran Stucy and Stringer are the bookend Robert Smith having an outstanding year Carter and Reed the wide receivers and you'll be seeing a lot of Randy Moss as well in fact Moss is in the lineup covered by Darrell Green on first down from the 25 Cunningham going to Moss and it's tipped at the line and it was Kennard Lang who got a hand on it defensively for the Redskins and they have uh, faltered particularly against the run the ends Kinney and Lang Stubblefield and Wilkinson and it's Smith Patton and Ken Harvey the linebackers and in the secondary once again Liam on Evans starts at strong safety the strength there the cornerbacks Darrell Green and Chris Dishman who is still struggling this season second down and ten and you're still getting Darrell Green right down here on Randy Moss in the bottom of your picture and here is Robert Smith going wide and Liam on Evans will ride him out of bounds and that will bring up third and long for the Vikings so when you look at this Minnesota Viking offense, there's so many ways to go, but I think you really have to start with Randall Cunningham. If you listen to our pregame guys, Terry, Howie, and Chris, they all said the same thing about Randall Cunningham. A, he's better, and B, the reason for it universally has been the, the, the play of the offensive line. Now, once you get past that, I think there's a maturity in Randall Cunningham that I haven't seen, and I think that is as big a factor as anything. He's a much more calm person now. Third and ten, David Palmer has come in as the third down back. Still with three wide receivers, good protection for Cunningham, and his pass to Glover, the tight end, is broken up downfield. And that was Sean Barber, the rookie linebacker from Richmond, who made the defensive play. So it's fourth down, and the Vikings will kick. And that's that's the recipe right there. You ask at the start, Dick, what did the uh, Washington Redskins have to do to win? It's right there. See, they have to be able to compete on all three downs. If they can create a third and long and make them throw underneath, they'll win. Brian Mitchell, seventh in the NFL in punt returns, ready to receive the kick by Mitch Berger. Here is Mitchell going outside. One missed tackle. Mitchell still on his feet and gets a good, tough return to his own 43-yard line. That was a nine-yard return. So Gus Barat who's back in the starting lineup after Trent Green could not win a game. That is Farratt's five-year record as a quarterback for the Redskins. Joe Patton back from injury at left guard, replacing Trey Johnson, who is out for a while. And on offense, Terry Allen, the former Viking, who played five years here. Michael Westbrook having a big year at wide receiver. Hey, take a look right now. Johnny Randall is lined up inside, not outside where he usually is. He's on the inside, so it's... Uh, Pick your poison for John Randall. Two tight ends on first down from the 43. Going deep for Westbrook. Oh, I love it. And Michael Westbrook can come up in a fine play by Jimmy Hitchcock as he took the outside route, would not let Westbrook get near the ball. Hey, I, I love this. This is, you know, we talked about that Mark McGuire thing with the Minnesota Vikings and pushing the ball down the field. Well, the Washington Redskins says, guess what? We can do the same thing. And they um, automatically attack one of the weaknesses of the Minnesota defense, and that is, has been, the play of their corners. So you put it in their mind right away, guess what? We're coming at you early. There's a message by Norv Turner, second down and 10. In motion is Stephen Davis, and the handoff is to Terry Allen. He breaks one tackle, and Allen gets it out to the 46. It'll be third down at about six. Pete Bursich making the tackle defensively, and uh, Matt Millen hit on it. We'll be watching where John Randall lines up all afternoon. Versich replacing Dwayne Rudd in linebacker. Versich played three quarters against Green Bay. And there is that secondary that Matt talked about. That'll bring up third and seven. Dick, not only are we going to keep our eyes on where John Randall is. It's a third down and it's a third position John Randall's been in. Barat gets pressure and down he goes. Torian Gray, who is questionable with an injury, came in in the secondary, and the blitz pays off in a loss of seven. The blitz pays off because he looked up top right away, and a nice job by Corey Fuller. See, Corey Fuller 
He jumped it. See right there? He's looking right away. He wanted to go outside to Westbrook, but Fuller read the same thing and jumped it immediately, took it away, and provided for the sack. That is the 29th sack given up by the Redskins, and they are on mark to establish a franchise high. Matt Turk punting to David Palmer, and Palmer calls for the fair catch, and it hits a Viking, and the Redskins get the ball inside the five. It bounced off. Randy, Randy Moss, Moss and right the up. Redskins recover. Yeah, and that's one of those inadvertent things. It hit Randy Moss in the rear end. He wasn't aware of what was going on. But a nice job by Daryl Powell who picked it up, and it's first and goal. Remember, it's, it's a muff. It's not a fumble because there was never any possession. See, the ball hits, bink, hits him in the keister, flops backwards, and then Pounds comes down and recovers. Very alert. And as soon as he picks it up, it stays right there. That's it. That's, in fact, Pounds didn't even know it. Pounds was trying to stay out of the end zone so they could down it. Both of them had their backs to the ball when it hit, and that's the kind of break the Redskins had sorely wished for all season. First and goal at the two. Terry Allen is the lone running back. And here is Allen with the carry, and he dives in for the touchdown. So a break for the Redskins. Look at Terry Allen. You and think he's not fired up to be back here in Minnesota? He left here in 1994 after gaining 1,000 yards in two seasons for the Vikings. Not pleased with it, and you know he was revved up coming back in his first game at the Metrodome since leaving here. The worst thing you can ever do to a, to a team with no wins is encourage him. And now you've taken that underdog and you've given him a little shot of life. And that life can turn into a monster. And it also silences this throng as Carrie Blanchard's extra point is good. And so the turnover resulting in a Terry Allen touchdown and the Redskins, huge underdogs, lead the Vikings seven to nothing. Terry Allen, there's a happy Terry Allen. And that's letting out all that stuff from Minnesota. Why they let me go with my knees. Guess what? I'm back. And also trying to make amends from a fumble last week against the Eagles as David Palmer returns the kickoff. For the second time in the game, Palmer still a whirling dervish as he finally is brought down at the 32-yard line by Jamel Williams. You know, Dick, there's something to be said for awareness in football. And, and it's just not only being in the right place and hustle and getting there, you have to play with your eyes as well as anything. And the ball just pops up into his hands, and because of the awareness and being there, you make the play. Now, Chris Thomas knew it right away. He pointed because he saw and felt the ball pop back and then Pounds made the recovery. Only the fourth takeaway by the Redskins this year. Fewest in the league. Now the Vikings trailing 1-0, starting from their 32. A stunt coming in and a screen pass out to Robert Smith. Ken Harvey oh, with nice a play. bring down in the open field, preventing at least five more yards. Dick, do you know how hard that is in football? One of the hardest plays in all of football is a one-on-one -on -one tackle with a speed back out in the flat. That's called space. And what Harvey did was perfect. Because I want you to watch his angle. See, by his angle, he took away the inside and he made Robert Smith go one way. And when you eliminate two ways and give yourself one way, you have a chance. Well played. Randy Moss is lined up to the bottom of your picture. And he is defended by Darrell Green. Second down and six. And a play fake by Cunningham. And he's going to the sideline. Open is Chris Carter. And Carter making one of his patented catches, falling backwards, goes out of bounds, and a gain of 20 into Redskin territory. You know, that time they used Chris Carter's speed, I mean, uh, Randy Moss's speed, to open for Chris Carter. Because what they did is they took Randy Moss and cleared the whole area. And Darrell Green had to clear the whole thing, and then Carter comes back out inside. That's and, a tough route. And now Chris Carter tied Anthony Carter with... A catch in his 105th consecutive game, and the Vikings, they're explosive offensively with a first down on the Redskin 44. Robert Smith gets tackled after a gain of about six by Leamont Evans, the strong safety. And they tacked, they attacked right inside. Now, Robert Smith really is a, is a guy who likes to get to the outside. And you'd think that in a game like this, where the defensive ends of Washington aren't as strong, is that they try to stay that way. But... That being said, you still have to body punch and go inside. And against the Washington Redskins defense, that's supposed to be their strength. Randy Moss comes out. Charles Evans is in as fullback in the eye. 
Second down and six. Cunningham giving ground the screen. Low pass to Evans, and he's tackled by Derek Smith. Another good play by Derek Smith. That's two backers played extremely well. When, when you have a team like Minnesota and they're throwing and you want to get to the ball and you start, you start playing a little bit reckless, well, then you soften that with some screens. Derek Smith read it perfectly, and the key to a screen pass, you've got to get on your coverage right, right away. It'll be third and short. Randy Moss is back in along with Leroy Horde and David Palmer. A lot of speed in the lineup now for Minnesota. Palmer's in there for a reason. When they put him there, if they get lined up on a linebacker, big mismatch. Third down and two. Cunningham looking to throw again. Going up the middle. And the pass is caught by Palmer. And you called it. David Palmer gets down to the five-yard line. And he was matched up against the linebacker and beats him to the tune of 33 yards. Well, he caught him. He caught him all through in that zone. And so you take David Palmer, 22, right down here, and that's a guy who's got speed and he's got some make you miss. See, now they're playing the zone, but now we talked about awareness with David, uh, with with Smith, and also Patton inside. You have to know what 22 is in the game for a reason. I mean, that's got to have a little extra side of it in your mind. 22 comes in. Guess what? Ball's going to him. So many threats on this Minnesota team. They have scored on their last 23 possessions in the red zone. They start from the four. And the handoff to Leroy Horde, and he is brought down at about the one. Horde is the power back on this team, so this Viking offense can go in several dimensions. You know, so many facets of this game and speed of the receivers you talk about, but Chris Carter, you know why he, he impresses me? Two reasons. Number one, he plays the game with his eyes as much as his physical ability. But the, the physical ability in the blocking game, he turns into super crit. He gets an S in his chest, and he will try to beat you up. I love that. And does succeed most of the time. Second and goal at the wall.